Max, any last words? Because you, you've been the biggest loser in, in the month of March. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm a big loser. You're a big winner. It's um, <laughs> basically all I have to say. Okay, all and right. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome for me rooting against you for every day. <laughs> On today's part of my take, we've got a twofer for the people. We have... Dan Hurley, coach of the UConn Huskies, in studio, post-national championship. He also gives Max the business, basically calls him a loser to his face because he is. We have Kirk Goldsberry on to talk about NBA playoffs, a little preview. Don't worry, everyone. We have our hockey preview coming on Monday with Ryan Whitney. Uh, we're going to talk about some play-in games. We're going to do Firefest. What is that face, Hank? What are you doing? It's a big promise. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's true. Whitney could definitely be like, oh, I, I had to do, you know, I had a dinner and then I had a stream and then I had a dinner and I'm done. So don't forget, hopefully. Don't forget golf. He might yeah, also have to golf. That's true. Uh, we are brought to you by our friends at Barstool Sportsbook. Today's part of my take is brought to you by Barstool Sportsbook. The Barstool Sportsbook is now offering a $1,000 bonus for new players. If your first bet loses, get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. So download and create an account today. Use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus. Be sure to use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus today. Uh, I'm looking at it right now, and I got a little something I just cooked up. I want to hear what you guys say. So you can parlay uh, NBA series for the first round. The Warriors, the Suns. The Sixers and the Celtics all to advance plus one oh seven. How does I that, kinda like that. How does that lose? I never in the history I of a like of a of a high seed parlay bet has it ever lost. Uh, yeah, exactly. Take all the ones and twos. Yep. And you'll be happy. But yeah, there's a ton of new stuff. Uh we have exclusives every single day. We have we'll have some awesome exclusives for the NBA playoffs. So go check it out right now. The Barstool Sportsbook again is now offering a thousand dollar bonus for new players. If your first bet loses, you get up to a thousand dollars in bonus cash. So download and create an account today. Use code Take to unlock your thousand dollar bonus. Be sure to use code Take to unlock your thousand dollar bonus. Terms apply. Must be twenty one plus. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Friday, April 14th, and PFT for the, I don't know, this is probably like the sixth or seventh time. Mm -hmm. The floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, we've talked about Dan Snyder a lot on the show and about the sale a lot. I don't know. I actually don't know if I have that much to add besides what I've already said over the course of the last well, What happened? What changed? Years? You're selling shirts. Tell the people what happened. Yeah, We're okay. selling shirts. I'm excited. Don't, don't, I'm, no. I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a shirt right now that says, buy Dan, and it's, Ju ma it's Major Tutty throwing Dan Snyder out of his stupid fucking Ju face. Just because you got excited the other six or seven times doesn't mean you can't get more excited this time. Well, okay. What changed? So, so I, I'm yeah, what did change, Hank? Good question. News came out this morning that uh, I guess Sportico reported it according to a source close to the sale. Josh Harris, the owner of... Max's 76ers and the New Jersey Devils is actually going to purchase the team for $6 billion. Congrats to Dan Snyder for making $5.2 billion being Hell a shitty an ass piece of shit. Um, so say what you want about him, but he made a fuckload of money. I hope he goes off, fucks off to England and dies. But today it was announced that Josh Harris, excuse me, he dies in jail. First he gets arrested, yeah. then he dies. Uh, Josh in British Harris, prison where they don't have dentists. No, absolutely not. The worst dentist on earth. Well, they don't have dentists outside of jail either in Britain. Yeah, that's true. So I, I hope that he dies with shitty teeth and a gum infection. And I think uh, I think it's a, it's a done deal from everything that I've heard so far. There's a competing bid allegedly from Stephen A, the the Canadian billionaire. But the, it's gonna be, it's Josh Harris. It was announced today. It's Josh Harris. He's going to take over the team. So I'm I'm very happy. But there's a small part of me. Very small part of me that's like the dog that caught the car. Yeah. It's like now that the bad man's gone, what am I what am I gonna have to blame all my failures on as a sports fan? Yeah, you can't complain about the commanders for at least five years ish. And I so Hank is is nodding along. Um I feel like you're you're doing are, are we what happens when it officially becomes official? No, when, this is when the, does it officially <laughs> <become> <laughs> no, no, I'll talk for Hank. We're gonna do this again. Like we're gonna do this again in how long? Listen, I didn't. I didn't even bring it up. Okay, so Ooh, I, you're, you're wearing the shirts. You're, I'm you're, wearing the you're shirt. Doing, I can't believe this is my life. Tweet. They're great <laughs> shirts, by the way. Go check. They out are the great shirts. Stores. I was trying to be respectful. You were. Yeah. I saw you doing videos and stuff in the hallway. I was like, it's another big day. I didn't do. People just came up to me with a camera, so they asked me what I thought. I told them I've already celebrated Dan being gone. He's gone. It's happening. 
Uh, now the only major hurdle that we have to clear is the uh, the owner's vote, which is going to take place in May. But he's already an owner, kind of, of an NFL team. He's a part owner of the Steelers. They're going to vote him in. Okay. It's This is a done deal, and it's going to happen, and everything's going to be good, and maybe we'll get more than two playoff wins in the next 25 years. What's up, Billy? Is it really a done deal? Have they secured the funding to buy the team? Yes, Josh Harris's funding was, was secured. secured. It's secured. With if this rates. doesn't go through, I'm going to kill myself. Billy, well, money is expensive right now. <laughs> Billy, I'm yeah, I am buying a house right now, so I'm familiar with how much money is expensive. I'm pretty sure Josh Harris is good for how it. How expensive is money? Money is like seven percent expensive. Okay, maybe so if you got I, for, to buy a thousand credit. dollars, you'd have to yeah, you have to pay you have to pay ten seventy. What you said seven percent? Yeah, yeah ten seventy. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's a done. It's expensive. Listen, it's a yeah. done deal. We're moving forward. Congrats! I'm, I thank you, Hank. I, I'm looking forward to being able to root with like my entire heart and soul for a team because it's been a big stain on you know it's been in the back of your mind. Anytime the team's good, you're like I love I love this team. I love watching them every Sunday. But then at the end of the day, you know that something's about to get fucked up worse than it was fucked up ever before. Um, so we're gonna start playing the parade. We're gonna have a parade in DC. Okay, nice. I'm very excited about it. So nice. I so I'm not as pumped and over the top as I have been in the past because like you said I have we have talked about this like five times well he, the, he, Snyder has has basically uh, like teased it so many times that it's like it kind of robbed you of the it almost would have been better if he just all of a sudden overnight just was selling the team they'd be like the greatest celebration ever it's been this long drawn celebration yeah well the the big one was back and i think it was november yeah when the news first broke at that point then it was like okay that's the big celebration that i've got this i'm a little bit more subdued but i'm still fucking pumped that this guy's gonna be i wrong. remain happy for you thank you hank i can't say the same no he's not hank's but i've hater. remained I happy am, the no, whole time I, all i'm saying is be careful what you wish for Buy a shirt. nfl because you have awoken a sleeping giant in washington dc yes the shirts are great they are great you're shirts. happy for him yeah uh not really I just you can only be happy for someone so many times. You know what? You know what? Like someone gets pregnant, you're like congratulations, but then it's not like hey, I'm pregnant again three months later and three months later. It's like you get one congratulations. You know what, Hank? Because Josh Harris is also the Sixers owner, I have no choice but to root with Max. Oh no! For the Sixers against the against the Celtics in the playoffs. But so, he's not even going to be the owner by that point. No, he's not selling much. the Sixers. Oh, you're of the he's commanders. Not, yeah, he's not. I don't care. Owner. I'm such a Josh Harris fan right now that he could he could do anything. He's owner in waiting. Yeah, owner in waiting. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so just uh, why don't you check yourself? All right, that's yeah. fine. You Hank. Yourself. I'm excited to get a good rivalry going with Hank. It's been a while. I feel like it's always we're always. No, I'm just Hank, well, Hank's just fighting like you guys. a, I'm a six sided war <laughs> <laughs> at all times. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, congratulations again. Go buy a shirt. Uh, what else we want to talk about? The little play-in game? Yeah. So D.R. DeRozan stole uh, the story of the play-in game on Wednesday night. She single-handedly stopped the Toronto Raptors. My Bulls are advancing to Friday night, which is always mm -hmm. fun when you win a play-in game and then you get to go to play another play-in game. But there was – I so for people who didn't watch the game, the Bulls were down pretty much the entire game. DeMar DeRozan's, uh, DeMar DeRozan's like eight-year-old daughter, she was sitting underneath the what in the first half was the Chicago Bulls hoop. In the second half, obviously, the Raptors were shooting on it. She was screaming so loud before every free throw that the Raptors took in a dead silent arena. The Raptors went 18 for 36 from free throw, from the free throw line. Ended up losing the game by what, four? It was – she won that game for the Bulls. Was, I'm, I mean, Zach Levine was also fantastic, which was nice to see him, like, step up in that moment. But D.R. DeRozan, statue for her. Yeah, she's great. She's way better than Riley Curry. Yes. If we're ranking NBA daughters. I got her 1A in my daughter draft. I think that uh, she was she was great, but maybe the best part of the night was the time that she didn't scream. Yeah. At the end. So there were three – Faked him out. There were three foul shots at the end, right? Yes. And uh, Siakam, Siakam. I think, which was kind of a bullshit call anyway, but yeah. Yeah, so Siakam got to the line, and then she faked out. She didn't scream. Was it the second one? Yeah. That she didn't scream on, and everybody was waiting for her to yell. Now, I, I think she did a great job, absolutely build the statue. Great daughter. However, I'm a little bit upset at DeMar DeRozan because he's not going to let her come yeah. to the game on Friday because it's a school day. Sports is way more important than school if you're a kid. It's also like – 
she's she's sixth man of the year. She should she should she should, she should be for every single. All I want now, because I, I I'm very I'm a realist about the Bulls. They're not very good. Uh, they have a couple good players, but as a collective, they're not very good. But could you imagine her in the first round against uh, the Bucks and Giannis in his 15 second free? Like she might lose her voice, she, but she would go. She'd go toe to toe with him. That would be her legacy game. Yeah, trying to trying to scream for fifteen seconds nonstop. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's it was very cool to see her actually like get into the heads of opponents. She totally but did. Here's the problem: there's going to be some copycats. Yeah, and it's not going to be the same. She has like a unique frequency in her voice well, that makes people freak out. It's not only that; it's such a unique situation because one, she's the daughter of Demar Derozan. Two, she grew up in Toronto where DeMar played the majority of his career, so she knows everyone in that arena. And three, like there is a, the, the NBA now, you can get kicked out for anything. Mm -hmm. Kyrie and Russell Westbrook have taught us that. I don't think you can kick out a player's daughter. She is like if a guy is just sitting there doing that, I think that a player probably complains and they get kicked out or have to shut him up. I think she's a secret weapon that – no other team can employ. Yeah, the rest of the fans couldn't go down and say shit to her because right. she's a little girl. Right. But and, it, yeah. she, and, and she obviously knows everyone in Toronto. Like, that was the other part is the whole entire, you know, the, the, the building staff, the security, they probably know her personally. Yep. So it was the perfect storm for D.R. DeRozan to completely stop the Toronto Raptors. I would love to see what would happen with this in Philly. Do you think that Philly fans would oh, dude, start throwing... Someone, a throw Max lookalike would punch her in the face. They'd start to throw hot dogs at her? Somebody yeah. go down there and throw up on her? Yeah. A Max lookalike would You're just... You're saying no, Max? start beating up a little girl. I'm, I'm, this is gross. This is disgusting. Well, I, listen, just accept it. I, I think that Philly should be proud of that. For punching little girls? You you don't think uh, like a lot of guys would be like, I, that, we stopped, we won that game? I would be pissed. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't... Pun I, I, I definitely wouldn't punch her but i would be mad no, you'd be definitely, mad. definitely not but that's the beauty of it you can't get mad at a daughter a daughter of a player and like she needs to be yeah fuck school mm -hmm. fuck get school. her to miami this it's way more important get I'm, her to miami she's eight years old what do you learn in eighth grade anyways do you remember it's a not eighth, thing? that's not eighth grade <laughs> oh eight years old <laughs> yeah. okay so that's third grade Third grade. Uh, she's very like, precocious. <laughs> you probably are graduating basic addition and subtraction, moving on to like basic multiplication, I would guess. Yeah, you're writing yeah. like five letter words, maybe. States yeah. and capitals. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. war zone. Oh, yeah. uh, mystery powders. You're doing like science for the first time. Well, what better way to learn states and capitals than go to the capital of Florida, Miami? Good point. Yeah. <laughs> You could get a better education. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, let's go. We education work for us. Uh yeah, it was it was awesome though. The Bulls, I and Pat Bev, maybe he is. It's it's between him and Trey Young. Trey Young's three and oh in, in play in games, so he, there's a legacy game for Pat Bev. Pat Bev was He'd be awesome. three and oh if he wins. Pat Bev always just manages to show up at the end of every play in game and do something fucking crazy. Yeah. Just insane. He's so much fun to watch. <laughs> and Caruso was awesome too. And it was nice. It was nice seeing Zach Levine, like, because uh, Hank doesn't really know this. Eh, Max, you kind of – well, you know this because of Ben Simmons, but, like, having a player that you pay a lot of money to that you want to step up in the big moments, when they don't, it gets very frustrating. When they do, it's like, oh, that was nice. Yeah, or maybe at least have the player that you pay a bunch of money to step on the court during the game. Yeah, that's That'd too. be nice because – Take a shot. Because Zion was in pregame warm-ups <sighs> – Zion Williamson, he's out because he's not feeling like Zion yet. He's healthy, but he's not feeling 100%. Um, he was dunking. He was doing like a windmill wind, yeah, windmill dunks in pregame. Yeah. Hey, he did look a little bit on the bigger side, but that's just Zion. That's, that's Zion, Zion being Zion. This would drive me in fucking sane. Whose idea was it to let Zion participate in the pregame dunk line? Oh, my God. I like... I would be so furious if I were a Pelican fan watching that and then watching my team lose to uh, the young. Do you know the Thunder are the the second youngest team in NBA history? Yeah, it's crazy. They're they, the Thunder are what like you know how we're saying on Wednesday the playing game is kind of stupid because these teams won't go anywhere, but you can switch it if it's a young team. The Thunder. Like, that's reps. They're building a winning culture because it was amazing to see Josh Giddy and Shea Gilgis and, and uh, Lou Dort, who are all under 24 years old, like, dominate that game and make big shot after big shot. And Zion is just sitting on the bench doing dunks pregame, not not playing. Yeah. Pitt, Pitt, who made the NCAA tournament, has an average starting lineup age older than the Thunder. That's, that's crazy. Wild. Yeah, they, are, they are very, very fun and very young. And, like, if you – like this is the type like they shouldn't even be in this spot and they are and they're in their lottery pick last year 
isn't playing. I think just getting to the playoff. If you play in a playoff series, if you're the Thunder, yeah, that's good experience. I want to see it. So yeah, they're getting Holmgren back, and they have probably a high first rounder, right? They I have would, like a million. I would picks imagine too. like they're picking like eleven or twelve How many in picks the draft, they have? and then they have four first round picks in twenty twenty four. It's crazy. So they they've got assets. All right. So the Thunder, and I think it it goes on for the future. All right. So they have uh, the Clippers pick this year, their own pick this year. Uh, the the Wizards second rounder. I won't do second rounders. Next year they have their own Utah's Clippers Houston's. So they have yeah, four four first round yeah. picks. And then in twenty twenty five they have their own Houston or the Clippers Miami's Philadelphia's. Like they every year they're going to be they have like five picks in the first round. They're a fun team. They are what the Pelicans thought they were going to be because mm-hmm. the Pelicans with Zion and Brandon Ingram like. Herb Jones, and it was going to be like, oh, this young up and coming team in the West. The Thunder kind of stole their their thunder. Yeah, they did, and I, there were some people out there that were saying that our our good friend Mincy, uh, being stuck up in the nosebleeds Tough. in this section. If Mincy had been down beneath the basket like Dr. DeRozan, I think this game goes a whole lot differently. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. So it was um that was a fun game. That was an exciting game. That was a a play. I think I'm just going to start grading every play in game. I'm going to make a a judgment on the play in tournament as a whole, just based on game to game. Okay. So, so right. like on Tuesday night, it was the worst idea that David uh, Adam Silver ever, I almost called him David Silver, Adam Silver ever came up with. On Wednesday night, it's pure genius. The league is back. Yeah. So right. Friday, we'll decide. It's the, a big the, night. The, the, the future of the play-in tournament, according to myself, is all going to come down to Friday night. It's a big, big night. Let's go Wolves. Yeah. I, I mean, it's look, official. under fun. Rap sheet just tweeted about the sale. Oh. Okay. That... It this, went, they reached the agreement. Wait, okay. but that is that different than that was one minute ago? Yeah, this Both. is this is me being subdued. Yes, yeah. Hank. See, see, Hank. Wait, what Hank? is that? Do is that see? different than what was? It is not exclusive and not signed. Okay, so we got to wait again. All right, so, so we'll, we'll celebrate. celebrate. Next week. Yeah, 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 we'll celebrate and we'll. I'm not wait, celebrating. Celebrate some more. I'm acting like I've been there before because I have five <laughs> times. <laughs> um, yeah, the playing games were fun. They were fun on Wednesday night. We're we're playing game guys now. And then on fr- Friday, I'll decide if I'm not. I guess so. I just. I, but isn't it fun to just do? We'll, we'll just be as knee jerk and uh, as as like recency biased as possible with the playing games. That's just how I'm going to judge it. So it's really the last game. The, the last, last play-in playing game, game. will gonna decide whether, whether or not it was a good play in tournament. Yeah, and then next year we'll do the same thing yep. again. Because okay. it, really, it is so funny that like it becomes a debate whether. The playing game is fun or not, or stupid or not. And it's like, but it's just going to, ha- it's, they're going to keep doing it because it makes more teams involved and makes more money for owners. So th- it's not going anywhere. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if they announced that they were going to do this in the NFL and add another playoff team via a play in game, mm. I'd be all in on that. Yeah. More, more football. football. Exactly. More football. It's more it's basketball. Like, yeah. We got more sports. Yeah. It's the only reason that it's even a debate for basketball is because you, it, with football, you can kind of tell yourself, oh, this, you know, there's been six seeds that have won the Super Bowl. Yeah. There's never been an eight seed that's won the NBA uh, finals. Yeah. It's just, it's very funny to think that they have a play in tournament when the entire season is a play in tournament for the playoffs. Well, and we're going to have the midseason play in tournament too, yep. which will be fun as well. Uh, all right. So, Jake, Heat versus Bulls, Friday night. No DR DeRozan. Yeah. You got to feel confident. We'll see. Not uh, okay, that was yeah, yeah. That was your pregame show. <laughs> how, wait, Jake, how much popcorn? A kettle corn. I bought this a huge a z- bag. This is a zero kettle corn. Oh, I bought a you're huge not having, bag. You're of not popcorn. having any kettle corn for this game, though. I'll, sh- it's I'll also tw- the night before I broadcast. So I'll. Oh, you can't. Yeah, I'll tweet out my bag of popcorn. It's enormous okay. for Friday night. Okay, I'll be eating so much fucking popcorn, and you not eating popcorn makes me think the Bulls are going to win. Yeah, they might. Yeah, you're not really into it. What do you? Yeah. What do you got? What? What, do you, what broadcast you got? Oh, funny you asked. <laughs> it's the 49th annual uh, FDNY NYPD hockey game at UBS Arena on Long Island. Barstool.tv pregame. Big Cat will be on the panel at 4.15. I will. Biz and I will be, and Whitney will be uh, ringside in between the benches at 5 o'clock as puck drop. Barstool.tv. Can't wait. I think it's harder to get tickets for this event than Taylor Swift tickets. It might be. Yeah. They don't sell them. You can only get them through. They give the tickets to, like, firehouses and... Yeah. Police houses, and that's the only way you can get them. This is police like, houses. This is much washed. What are stuff. they called? <laughs> stations. The, stations, stations yeah. <laughs> the NYPD. <laughs> why is it how? Why? Why do the firemen get stationed? Why do the firemen get oh, houses? I think the firemen actually like sleep, sleep over there. there. Yeah. 
But <laughs> anyway, have, I'm just it. asking Any questions. Any other questions? They have, a, they have a kitchen. No, I'm glad. I'm glad Hank's asking this because if you're asking it, then some other person at home, probably one person at home, is like, "Why isn't it a house?" Thank you, Hank. Some police. Dr. DeRozan probably learns that in in eighth grade. Yeah, in eighth grade as an eight year old. What were you gonna say, Billy? Uh, just FDNY, uh, FDNY, uh, NYPD events always go hard. Like their football game, there was a huge fight. Like in the couple, stands? No, on the field. It was like huge brawl, and like their boxing events are insane too. But so it's all it love after. after. No, not really. Oh, okay. They still hate each other. Oh, nice. So, Jake, have you worked on your your announcing when it comes to fighting? Because there will be fights that you'll have to do play by play for. Yeah, that will be awesome. And I feel like the comp, like Biz, is gonna go all in on that too. It's gonna yeah. be great. Can't um, wait. Can't wait. Yeah. So uh, other things, the the Tampa Bay Rays are now thirteen and zero. We didn't jinx them. Is that a record? Tied. Tied. Two teams. It reminds me of that fa- that famous clip teams. when someone uh, called into Francesa before opening day and was like, "You ever think a team is going to be able to go one sixty two and zero?" And he like debated the guy for <laughs> real. I was like, "No, it's it's, it's crazy." But now, are the Rays ever going to lose? Three games set at Toronto this weekend, and then three games at Cincinnati. Third, I, I know they haven't played a lot of good teams, but still, 13-0 is fucking impressive. Yeah, it is good. Crazy. I, yeah. I, I wonder how that translates, though, to the rest of the season, just in baseball history. Also, go ahead, sorry. The teams that get off to the hottest start, I wonder how frequently they end up in the World Series. Yeah, probably baseball, not often. Baseball is such a streaky sport that you'd almost rather, you'd rather end the season. Well, definitely you'd rather end the season 13-0 than start at 13-0. But, um, and there's so many games. They're basically, if it was the NFL, they're like they would. And they, no, and they're one, no, they're one and zero and up at halftime of the second game. Yeah, yeah. Also, in ten of the thirteen games, they've given up three runs or less. Ooh, that's so, pretty like, good. That's I unreal. I was walking by the gambling cave today, and it feels like they're just like toying with teams because they were I, they were playing the Red Sox. They had bases loaded, two outs, and a guy bunted a, a run in. I love that. Small I, I don't ball know. Like, insane. Give me small ball. That's a all fucking day. crazy move. And we will be doing the uh, the fancy baseball draft at some point. Yes. Yes. We'll have to find one more person. Yes. That also has to happen. We're going to – there was – maybe Tom Fernelli wanted to be in. I want to do the draft at, at, at uh, All-Star break and have all the stats count. Already, the Max had the idea. Clothes. Looking past, he was already looking past uh, the first round. This is a program saying, "No, that, that that's illegal. That's that, you can't do that. Uh, God forbid you try and program the show or, or, or do any scheduling." He said, "I we should, I I we said that the, you didn't get full ownership for Brooks choking. We should do not on Twitter. Uh, we should. Oh, do, you know, I thought Twitter is not an app that we should use anymore. It's not. I mean, it's pointless. But huh. the facts remain." Uh, we should do it during a hypothetical Sixers Celtics live stream to the draft during. Oh, like that. that's I also, good. I also think we should have Tom draft the team and then you just manage the team and you act like it was yours from the start. Yeah, but Tom that's knows baseball. Good. But I, he can, I'll have him manage it. But then I'll just say he takes all the credit for Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, yeah, th- that would be great. Oh yeah, and we should do, we should do like no computers. We should have like a big draft board. So we have to like write write down the names and stuff. This is a big Just future. That would be awesome. Situation. Yeah, and yeah, because we'll we'll definitely repick. Actually, we should count repicks if they're honest repicks past like the tenth round. <laughs> <laughs> like two, two a team can own <laughs> uh, the same guy. We're gonna have to get Stephen Che involved for yeah yeah to figure this out for us to coordinate it. Yeah, he can be the commissioner. He already has he has skills as being the commissioner mm-hmm. of uh, fantasy. We also have. Potentially, depending on what happens tonight in hockey, Hank versus Memes in the first round. Islanders, uh, Bruins. I also want to give just a heads up to anyone who follows part of my take on Twitter. Please subscribe to the YouTube as well. I have told Memes that he can just do a personal tweeting of all Islanders games because he it is the, the team that he cares the most about. And it was funny seeing on the PMT Twitter the other night just having an Islanders post just out of, no, out of the clouds because they mm-hmm. clinched the playoffs and... It was like, I don't think we've ever talked about the Islanders on this podcast. And he's just like, you know, take take the wheels to this. No, we were at the last game at the uh, at the barn. Yeah, we were. Wait, no, no, that, no, no, no. We they went to it. seven. Yeah, we saved the barn. Yeah. That, that was the last game there, wasn't it? No, they played game seven there, I want to say. They played one other game. They there. did have another game. I don't know if it was there at the barn. But we saved the barn. We did save the barn. And we'll that, be at their current the home this weekend. For yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <funny guys. laughs> the NYPD FDNY game. Uh, all right, what else? What else? Uh, Billy, let me ask you a question. Yep. Are you getting a little nervous about not having a quarterback? Yep. <laughs> it does feel weird. I mean, every week it's like 
it could be my fire fest. It's it's just ongoing, and everything that new comes out feels like they're farther apart. Is is Aaron Rodgers? I think there was a quote that said he was ninety percent retired. Yeah. And Woody Johnson wanted confirmation. Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good at all. When was that quote? It's from somewhere. Okay. I think it was said in private, and Woody Johnson just like was like, "What the fuck?" Like we want some the, insurance. See, the thing is, like Aaron, he's not going to play on the Packers this year, but he might. He might retire. Right. And you, know who's the worst? The Packers fans, because they're just gloating about Tell the whole me about situation. It. Like you can't have him. We can't have him. Like yeah. This, Welcome to my world. It, yeah. It's it's not off to a good start. Even if he becomes a quarterback of the Jets, and I'm sure you guys will forget about this if he starts winning football games. But it's not a good sign to start the relationship if you ask somebody out on a date and then she ghosts you for the next two months. Yeah. We signed Boyle. Oh, Tim I, Boyle, TB12. Yes, who we think is like his, you know, like emotional support backup. Yeah. Like, so hopefully that's like a step closer to like one of his guys it's, to get him there. I'm enjoying the hell out of it because he's, like PFT said, he's not playing for the backers. So I've already, I've already moved on. I'm, I don't care where he plays. I don't care if he plays. I don't care if he goes anywhere. Like, it's that relationship is over. I've done my celebrating. It's over. Mm -hmm. You know who's the real winner right now? Who? Zach Wilson. Why? Okay. Because all right, here we go. Hold on. Hold on, like, everyone. If you're standing up listening to this, sit down. Go. Like, what if Aaron Rodgers doesn't go? Then who's the guy? It's Zach Wilson will suck again. I know, but like for him, it's like, oh. I think if you're Zach Wilson, the best case scenario is that you don't have to play. Correct. Yeah. More tape is bad tape. Yes. Just be a if backup. you're Zach Wilson. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the nightmare scenario for Zach Wilson. Yeah. Because he yeah. could back up Aaron Rodgers for a year. They win a Super Bowl, hypothetically. And then he's now like had a year to study behind Aaron, and people are like, "Wow, Zach Wilson might be good." Whereas if he actually has to play football, people are going to be like, "Oh yeah, Zach Wilson's not good." Right. Yeah. Right. Um, it's all bad. All right. Everywhere. So uh, we're two weeks from the draft. I did see uh, s s there's like a report that Stetson Bennett might go undrafted for off field things, which just made me laugh because. If he was a uh, top ten pick, there's no chance he would go. <laughs> like, yeah, he was already a sixth or seventh rounder. So I feel like teams are just using this as like, hey, we're standing up for something. It sounds like smokescreen season. To yeah, me. it sounds like one person was like, yeah, we really want him, so we're just gonna say he might go on draft. Yeah, the arrest video wasn't that bad. I thought it was a lot worse as it was described. What, I, describe it. I missed the Stetson it. Bennett video. Yeah, yeah, no, I missed. Yeah, it. so he got basically like locked out and lost his phone, and mm -hmm. then like once the officers got there, he was like pretty respectful and then he just like started because someone called that he was banging on a door trying to get in could happen See, to anyone i, I think yeah. the worst arrest video was baker mayfield because he yeah. got caught from behind he got caught by like a middle-aged dude yeah. yeah like that was bad if i was the browns i'd say nope nope not no me chance. Yeah. yeah um all right and the last thing i had was uh i don't know if you guys saw but jim nance did a podcast and he came out in defense of tony romo Oh, that's good. So I'm going to read the quote to you, and you tell me if you think there was any smoke to the fire that everyone was talking about. Jim Nance should not be on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. But frankly, that's beneath Jim Nance. It is. So he said, Tony is the best. He's the absolute best. And he's also one of my best friends. I love the guy. And when somebody starts questioning our chemistry, there's an agenda there. There's nothing wrong with our chemistry. I've never had b better chemistry with anybody in my career than Tony. All you have to do is sit in the booth with us, which people that are covering our business, they're always welcome to come in and take a look at how we interact between the two of us on the air, off the air, between plays. It's amazing. I'm not worried about it. Here's what I don't get. Where was this all this outcry during the season? It's not like we were invisible. Mm, me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Yeah, that's like, uh, I'm not mad. <laughs> don't say that I was mad. Please don't write in the newspaper that I was mad. Tony is the best. He's the absolute best. And he's also one of my best friends. Yeah, Jake, describe describe well, sitting next to Billy, working with Billy. What would you say about that? Yeah, he's the best. He's one of my best friends. Yeah, he is. Yeah, exactly. There we go. And we rest our case. Also, he said anyone in the business is welcome to observe. I'll do it. Okay. In the fall. So you'll go observe. If they come to MetLife, or I guess Soldier Field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, go Chicago's observe. usually on Fox, but you You have I'll permission go to go anywhere to observe them for and, a game. and report back. Will you call okay. it straight, or will you have such reverence for Yeah, Jim I'll live tweet it. Okay, yeah, but I, like you, there's no way they're gonna let you in the booth. Jake, shot, you would be yeah. in the presence of Jim Nance, and you would just you just cream yourself. Yeah, you, you would. You'd I cream your cackles. I don't think you'd be able You're to call that straight. We'll go back to my Twitter two weeks ago. It happened. What would you say? Oh, he saw Jim Nance. That's yeah. right. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like if you got to watch him call a game, oh, there's cool. no way you'd be like the the chemistry up here is questionable. Yeah. So I'm yeah. willing to observe and take notes on that if okay. they allow me. Perfect. So CBS, me, CBS, yes, invite us. I won't do anything bad. Definitely not. No. 
No, like actually. We, yeah. we need to like get it so that uh, we're... <laughs> We're like we get a big trench coat and we're underneath we'll, Jake, or we, yeah, just like in Space Jam, yeah. put, a, put a stink bomb in his jacket. He doesn't even know. <laughs> just yeah. detonate it. Yeah. What about a or real, just bomb? real bomb? And yeah, real bomb would be yeah. sick. <laughs> Kill Tony Romo. <laughs> Jake, yeah. No. All right. So invite us, CBS, <laughs> to be determined whether Jake will be carrying a real bomb or not. No, I, I will. <laughs> Jake, have you ever seen the movie Valkyrie? No. With you Tom can't. Cruise. If okay. we put a suicide vest on you, you can't really stop us. Well, then I wouldn't go. No, but you can't. Oh like, yeah, then it's yeah. Yeah. What would you? Oh, you'd do like the noble thing and like jump into the ocean and and just blow it up there. Would you die for Jim Nance? Ooh, good question. No. Okay. Wait, uh, all right. That's not an answer, Jake. That was a that all was right. a regretfully yes. So you'd be alive, but Jim Nance would die, and then no, that's selfish. So you would die for Jim Nance. I guess. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah. So Jake's the perfect suicide bomber. Though. Yes, perfect suicide bomber. <laughs> Little. There's a, Jake. When you get to heaven, there's a thousand gymnasts calling every game. A <laughs> uh, little correction: Stetson Bennett did make a couple of comments to the cops about like how they ruined his reputation. <laughs> there was That's a, a good, in, in, yeah, good correction. So Billy will be rooting for the FDNY this weekend. It sounds like <laughs> no, 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 NYPD. Okay, okay, <laughs> good correction. Um, all right, we got two awesome interviews. He's overall pretty respectful, probably. <laughs> uh, we have. Dan Hurley in studio, fresh off the national championship. And then we're going to do Kirk Goldsberry, NBA preview, talking about the first round, who we think uh, is going to make it out of the first round. And also he gives us his NBA finals prediction, which was fantastic. Before we do that, Morgan and Morgan, if you've been injured in an accident, Morgan and Morgan makes it easy for you. File a claim online, upload pictures, evidence, text your lawyer, get a settlement direct deposited. Do almost everything from your phone. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. Over 800 lawyers nationwide. Over $15 billion recovered so far. Over 100 offices. Over 30 years of experience. The fee is free. You only pay if you win. So visit forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law to start a claim today. That's forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law to start a claim today. If you have been injured in an accident, Morgan and Morgan will defend you. They will do the best for you. So it is super easy. They have the America's largest law uh, injury law firm. Visit forthepeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law to start a claim today. Okay, here he is. UConn head coach, Dan Hurley. Okay, we now welcome on a recurring guest in person. He is now a national champion, is coach Dan Hurley from the UConn Huskies. Uh, we talked to you after the Elite Eight, so congratulations. You did it. You, you proved it. Uh, has it set – I mean, you're, what, we're like a week and a half after? You just rang the bell. You've been doing the whirlwind tour, the, the parade and everything. Has it fully set in? That you are a national champion, and that this is, like you 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 did it, you did it, yeah. UConn did it, UConn did it, we did it, uh, like, uh, you know, like you, the blur really since like I'd say you know winning the Arkansas game, man, like that, getting ready for Gonzaga, knowing you're like a game away from getting to a Final Four, blur really from that from that Gonzaga game through to, you know, sitting here with you guys, man, it's been a blur. And then, um, so like really just in the car, maybe like driving home, you think about it, oh, sh like shit, won, we did it, yeah. Won a national championship. Yeah. I was coaching high school 12 years ago, whatever. It, it's like uh, amazing. But they, you know, the job wakes you back up because everything just starts moving. I wish I could have played in like the CBI or the NIT or kept the season going because now I'm dealing with all the same, <laughs> same shit, shit yeah, that yeah, everyone right. else is dealing with. Right, the NIL and transfer portal. And, and right after the game was over, it's like the media blitz starts right as soon as that final horn sounds. And one of the first people that got to talk to you after the championship was our darling Jake. Yes. He was down on the <laughs> yeah. court. He pulled you aside and you said, I can't wait to go back on uh, the podcast. Do you, do you remember the name of the podcast that you're on right now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You nailed it. It's right in front of me if I messed that up. Now, now, to be fair, like in the in the heat of the moment, you were probably not thinking about this podcast as soon as you maybe you were. I don't know after you win the national championship. Not at that moment. Shortly. Oh damn. Shortly after. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yes. I did. I did actually congratulate Andrew, your son, 
And I was like, if he responds tonight, I'm going to try to FaceTime him through Instagram. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that I thought I would been... let you guys enjoy that. I know. It, I'm t- it's like the media, but then it's, you know, it's like the agents. They're all waiting for you. Yeah. Right? Like uh-huh. the players, agents. It's crazy. You get back to the hotel. You think it's just going to be a celebration, but. Everyone's got someone. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, everyone's pitching so, their shit. So right after you win, we, we were lucky enough to interview Coach O at mm-hmm. LSU right after they won, <laughs> like the morning after. And you could tell he was still kind of in coach mode. He was like yeah. running around yelling at the players like, the bus is leaving 8 a.m. sharp, be there. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> like he was still trying to whip them into shape and make sure that they were on the right schedule. Right after you win, how much of your job is still like as – uh, you know, on the administrative side as a coach, making sure the players are following like all the random details and how much of it is like you getting a chance to to celebrate yeah. with your family and, and with your guys. Yeah, man. So it's like, uh, you know, I'm like old school. I coach these guys pretty hard, you know, and you can tell by the way we play that like, you know, our, like our, you know, our whole like organization, it's pretty, uh, you know, it's discipline. So for me, after you win that, it was much more of like, celebration with 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 the guys you know like you you your relationship is is like when you win a championship like that together like you know they they maybe see a different side of you you're more like i don't know more vulnerable more open like a hug and it's nothing but love right so yeah. now like i've been nice to them you know th- these guys you know since we won it i mean i'm sure these guys have had a great time and you know, you could tell some of the some of their, these guys have baggy eyes. They look tired. <laughs> so yesterday I had to bring them in, and, and like, all right, fellas, like we got to get back on track here, right. and we got to start functioning like an organization again, uh, because like you guys have enjoyed this enough. But those are the really cool moments in college sports where I think even your embrace with Jordan Hawkins, knowing that he's going to go pro, and what he was, what he proved this past year to in increases lottery status and all that mm-hmm. and you guys accomplish it together those are the moments that are, are yeah. like beautiful i don't want to no, sound no. sappy but i love those all the brutality you yeah. know all the brutality that we all go through you know like uh the sacrifice like the amount of time uh you know the intensity of what we do to be able to like deliver in big moments like that you know and then you know, like you recruit this kid and his, his family's all in with his career and the dream is like go to UConn and absolutely crush it. You know, when, when you when you when it hits like that on both sides, man, it's like... It's the best. It's the best because it usually don't go like that. Right, you know? right. Uh, this might be a dumb question, but from our point of view, was it too easy? <laughs> it felt too easy for you guys. Yeah, we. I kept looking at it like <laughs> Luke, Luke Murray and... Kamani and Young and Tom Moore. I was like, felt like, in like, right before these games started, is this is this going to be the one? Is this going to be a game right. where like it's going to have to be free throws or a big shot? But just when you really, you know, minus that month of January, man, like it was like you you were proving we, that's what we did the whole year yeah. minus the month of January. You were proven so correct when you said like once we got out of Big East play because I think that it ended up what seventeen and zero against non conference opponents, yeah. all double digit wins. Yeah, and January it, felt like it was forever. Is it's the longest month in terms of days, right? Yeah, thirty. Yeah, thirty one. Yeah, that's as high as you could go. Right, it just yeah. felt like such a long month. Yeah. But it's crazy because it really did feel – I think you guys were trailing like all of like 50 seconds in the second half in the tournament. Yeah. It just felt – I don't know if there was ever a moment, maybe when San Diego State cut it to five, but even then you felt like – it felt like you guys weren't panicking and I think you might have called a timeout, but yeah. it, there wasn't a lot of panic. No, we, you know, the only one that panicked was my associate head coach, Kamani Young. When we are down versus Iona – I felt pretty – I mean, I didn't feel great about it. You're down at halftime, and you know what you did the year before. Teddy Allen, New Mexico, it was a disaster. So um, I went to the locker room. I felt like what they were doing was unsustainable. Yeah. And I felt like we were getting – like we were doing everything we wanted to do. It just wasn't happening yet. We were going to go on a run and get them out of there. But I, so I walked into the locker room. I was very composed. But I saw out of the corner of my eye Kamani Young and Jordan Hawkins' face, wake up. <laughs> we're not doing this again this year. <laughs> So I, maybe I don't know which one like yeah, had the impact. Been, it might have yeah. been him or me being cool or him yeah. losing his mind. A little bit of both. Coaches and teams are really good at at finding any perceived slight against them mm. to use that as motivation. <laughs> I mean, we saw it with the Chiefs this year. Yeah. Travis Kelsey was like, nobody believed in us. It's like you're the Chiefs. I think a lot of people did believe in you. You were kind of in a similar situation. You were just 
running roughshod on people, and uh, most people, with the exception of Max, who did bet against you, yeah. So every single game in the tournament this <laughs> so year, so he's a Villanova fan, uh, yeah. die hard. So every but, single game he bet against you. If you were Come looking, on, if you were looking for the <laughs> one doubter in the world to use as motivation, that's your guy right there. Well, we, I mean, I get it though, because we stole all of Max's hope because. <laughs> Everyone was talking up Villanova when, yep. when Justin came back. Mm -hmm. And then we played that final game of the regular season down in Philly, and, and we crushed you guys. And everyone was, like, <laughs> everyone was going crazy. Villanova's going to win the Big East tournament. Villanova's yeah. on the bubble. Who could have said that? And yeah. Max, we ended all that. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. It was a rebuilding year. You know, <laughs> oh, okay. First year head coach. Okay. That's what you were saying all yeah, year, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, when Moore came back, he was he was still a little hurt. So, <laughs> so, so was it was there any any of that that you were able, not for Max obviously, but did you ever were you able to play the like nobody is believing that you can win this game card? No one thinks that you guys can win the championship. Or if I guess probably not. Yeah. And if not, what did you use as the motivation? Like the fact, I mean, we weren't ranked. Unlike the Chiefs, I mean, they were like the Super Bowl favorite. Yeah. It was different. We were not ranked in anything in the preseason. So I think like in the beginning of the year, and for me, like just any time, um, you know, a, fl late, a flight is late or we, the hotel. Yeah, in Vegas. First hotel in Vegas was just a, it was a dump. And um, we just knew we couldn't stay in there. It was, it was shady and it was really bad. And then we went right to practice and then they robbed the bus and stole all the computers and so things like that that are going on hey like they put us in the worst hotel of all the seeds out here i mean i'll use any of that yeah, yeah. I mean, i'll use it all well if you want so max next year we we will offer him up to you because it is shocking like you guys won every game by double digits he bet against you every single game oh brutal well, so you couldn't even watch the games with any real <laughs> drama I, I don't think it was <laughs> i didn't robbed, just doubt completely UConn. robbed them of everything mm -hmm. i didn't doubt yukon i yeah. just hate yukon basketball <laughs> So like I couldn't bring myself to root for to bet on UConn because I truly hate your basketball program the a lot. The coaches, <laughs> the players, the fan, the fan, the fans really, the fans, the fans really. He yeah. gets really upset that you said what was the quote like? Get, uh, something about Madison Square Garden is your guys home away from oh, home. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I got yeah, mad yeah. at that. Yeah, he gets very upset about that. I mean, like when we come here, it's like. When we play St. John's here, it's like it feels like a home game. Yeah, yeah. no, no I, mean, I get we that. do. I mean, it's not like we dominate here. I mean, we've <laughs> we've done bad in here too. Yeah. I got thrown out of here in the Iowa game. I, mean, I had the chest bump. Yeah. It hasn't all been the joyride. Yeah. yeah, no, I I went pretty hard. At I was pretty excited when you guys lost in the Big East tournament to to go back to that quote that said that you. <laughs> I know, that and then one of the guys on Marquette did it, and yeah. it was taken out of context. <laughs> I didn't say like we can't be beaten here. Yeah, uh -huh. but said we're at home. You did have the quote. Get your wins in now. When you mm. lost to Villanova, was it year two? Year two. Year two. At, yeah, with yeah. Max's crew. So how does that feel? Like, that must feel awesome to be like, look, I said this, yeah. and I was right, and we were vindicated, and we put a championship up, you know, banner up in the, in, in stores. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I had to say something. Uh, you know, all those national championships, I mean, like from 19 to 14, four of them, and now you're playing like a mid-major, like really bad program. You know, year one, we played Villanova at the Garden. They smoked us. They beat us by 25 right before Christmas. It just, it killed, you know, it just destroyed Christmas. And we played them the next year um, on the road there, and we lost like a one-possession game. Like, we were right there year two. And I knew we had, like, our talent level was about to increase. I knew, you know, we kind of had our, our culture and organization together, and it was about to take off. And when you're a coach at UConn, sometimes you got to say shit to get, to rally the troops because it's uh, – you know, it's a high bar over there. Yeah, yeah. It's the basketball capital of the world. I, I did. I, I oh, I like it that. It is right now. I like that. Are you guys a blue blood? Because we had the debate. <laughs> yeah. We we gave you guys blue blood status for winning the. Fifth. I know. I know. So this uh, Dan Toscano, one of our board members and like uh, one of our, you know, big donors, uh, his thing is like, no, forget the the ble uh, blue blood. You know, we're in our, we're a program that bleeds blue. Mm. You know, Max, the bleed blue. So like, we're gonna create our own because we've got the five national championships and NBA players for days in the last 20 years, most of anyone. That is, yeah. Max, we bleed blue. We're, we don't even want to be a blue blood. We're our own kind of deal. It was cool. Like, it must have been awesome after the game to see all of the legends of, oh. you know, UConn on the, on the court celebrating with you guys. Like, that is, you know, there's some programs that have that, obviously. Kentucky's got a ton. Duke's got a ton. But to have that, and I'm sure that helps in recruiting where you're like, look, I'm hanging out with Ray Allen. I'm hanging out with, <laughs> yeah. you know, 
all big, these guys right after the game. Big star power. Yeah. I like big star power. And all those guys, they're in the practice facility. You got the ba all the banners. You got all the lottery picks. So, you know, Ray Allen and Rip, all these guys are looking looking down on us uh, on that practice court. And uh, just to have everybody kind of congregate out in Houston, man, it was just – it was a wild scene. Those guys were coming to practices. They're on the court with you while you're cutting down the nets. They're back at the hotel when there's just a absolute, like, mayhem back there. Yeah. And they're just, like, in the mix with all UConn fans. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Did you get a chance to catch up with Jim Nance after the Final Four? No, I uh, – not after, just on the podium – um, you know, but our podium, podium was like all disorganized, man. Like we had like key players and like major coaches were like in the back or like we had like GAs in the front with the trophy <laughs> with players that like didn't do as much as like other players. It was this very bad setup. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. But it was cool. Uh, uh, just being around people like that. I mean, again, I was like a high school coach not too long ago to yeah. be out there with like, you know, Raft and, and Jim Nance's last final four, his first ones with your brother. Uh, that was that was crazy. Yeah. So you, speaking of your brother, we had him on the day that you won the national title. We interviewed him on that Saturday before you had played a, played in a Final Four game. He, I want to give him credit. We gave him the question. He said he's a hundred percent rooting for you. So <laughs> I want you to know that he, because we gave him as many outs as possible. Yeah. Like, hey, wouldn't it be yeah. nice? You know, like there's maybe 001 percent like true serum that you want to do it before him. But he put it perfectly. He's like, I had the college career. Yeah. My dad had the high school career. And now Dan is doing his thing and, yeah. and, and winning a national title. It's like, did it, did you have a little of that where it's like, not that you've been living in the shadow of your brother and your dad, but there's yeah. been a lot of talk about those two guys, and now you have your moment. Yeah, it's like you know, when you look at your career as a player and a coach. It's not like I was like uh, had, had a you know, had a had a bad career. I mean, I was like a I ended up being a pretty good player at the end of my playing career. Um, you know, obviously my first attempt in college didn't work out great. I got fired at Rutgers as an assistant and didn't know that I'd necessarily even work my way back to this. But, you know, at St. Benedict's, I, I, I ran like a big time program at Wagner. We won at a high level, Rhode Island, like we did, you know, great stuff. But I never accomplished that real like elite level shit, right? Yeah. That mm -hmm. stuff that like, you know, it's the top, top of your uh, profession, top of the competition type of moment. So for me, yeah, I mean, it's... It, I've been a basketball lifer, so it was a big moment. Of that. I love yeah. it. I'd say, you've, yeah, this is this is definitely a huge moment, moment for you. I'll give you the opportunity. We'll do a headline grab here. So mm. I'll just give you the opportunity to say, the Houston Rockets call you tomorrow. Ooh. We want oh, Dan man. Hurley as our head coach. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not I, I've still got some, uh, I got some developing to do on the sideline. There's no one coaching like me in the NBA. They're not right. ready. They're yeah. not ready. Yeah. Like, they're not ready, and maybe I'm that, certainly not ready. <laughs> I do believe – I mean, that is something I, I aspire to, you know, down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, I love college. I, I hope I could, you know, continue to put UConn in this position moving forward. I don't think we're going anywhere. I think we'll kind of – I think we're going to stay somewhat in the area where we are. They're hard to do every year, but I think we've established a level. But NBA someday, I just got to kind of – you know, continue to mellow and, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, more well, zen. Well, so yeah. I read an article before the Final Four that said that uh, you were zen and this team was so good that you didn't get angry. Have you gone soft? No, no, no. Well, uh, people are saying he's gone soft. More, not you, me. You're not seeing the rage as much. Oh, no. You know, yeah, the rage behind closed doors was all there. The practice intensity you're, is. You're uh, getting a little mad that Big Cat yeah. called you soft right now. I yeah, can so see I want to deliver, it. man. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 I'm happy because I'm seeing that the it's true that you're not soft, but people have called you soft. I know. <laughs> so, well, ever not since me. you said that you didn't drink your own piss, and to me, that made you soft. I know, I know. I know. After, though, after the effing clown thing in, uh, in the Villanova game, once the effing clown thing went viral, like a lot went on after that. And I got, my wife sat me down, you know, my agent, um, and told me I had to just calm it down a little bit. Really since then, my, my the antics haven't been quite what they used to. Yeah. And we used to, we would show, um, we had like a four minute mixtape that we would show to like recruits and the recruits. Listen, their families love it. The players love the way I coach. Yeah. I know that, like, a lot of uh, opposing fans don't like it, um, you know, because it's it's intense, man. It's like it's in your face. Or that's the way we play. 
I don't care. I yeah. mean, I've also created a lot of enemies because everywhere I've been, I've won a lot. So all those other teams in those conferences and, and different places that we, we've kicked their ass, I've, I've made a lot of enemies over the years. Yeah. I don't care. So not soft. Not soft. Okay. All Just right. maturing Ooh. a little bit, yeah. picking my spots. Okay, yeah, it's, nice. it's, it's like a focused yeah. rage that oh, you can still channel yeah. sometimes. A time it's, and a place for everything, right? It's like my, you know, my, my, you know, my favorite coach, Fran. McCaffrey right it's like when he I just want to channel it like that and have more bigger moments like him did you like his stare down yeah that was crazy that and they was showed so me that. Awesome. I never saw that yeah. but when I saw it I, I <laughs> how much did he get a technical after that he, he, I, mean, I don't think he got that? a tech after that but that they came back they that was the crazy comeback where they were down like 12 with like 50 <laughs> seconds left and he just stood there he would he'd still be standing there if no if someone didn't grab him I got a lot of respect for the official and I had him on a tournament game and I wanted to ask him about it but like that was the best one I've seen I yeah think. that was just the best one so yeah good. you can't break a stare down you have to have you have to have your own guy pull you away from yeah it no, it was like the, the UFC face. or a big boxing man. yeah they were crazy. just locked forever I love him um speaking of the NBA I this is a weird question but so Kyle Anderson played for your dad <laughs> gets in that uh little thing with with Rudy Gobert and I'm wondering I don't know if you talked to your dad about it all but his restraint in that moment was exceptional because Rudy Gobert throws a punch at him. You can see him instantly like go after him, and then he immediately is like, "Wait, stop! This is like it's bigger than this. Like I have to, we have to win this game." Can we give your dad credit for that? Yeah, shout out to uh, Saint Anthony there. Slow mo, uh, you know, slow mo. Great family, like great, great, great people, and a you know state champion at Saint Anthony, number one in the country. One of the best players ever to come out of Jersey. Definitely St. Anthony. Mm -hmm. Street stops here. Miracle St. Anthony, all that. Yeah, and he and he, 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 he was taught correctly to not, no, not throw punches in the huddle. No, because, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he learned that at St. Anthony from my dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the look of a man that knew that Rudy Gobert had probably like two feet of reach on him. Yeah, with yeah. Long I mean, arms. smart guy. I mean, you know. My dad's an intense guy. I'm sure they came close to. He said yeah. that he was like, "Look, I've been, in, I've had these things happen. Like I've yeah. been in these intense wars." And it's Jersey. I mean, North Jersey basketball. Even I think back to when when I was coaching high school, Kevin Boyle, who's at Monteverde, who has like number one team in the country every year, and all types of NBA players. And my dad, we we're all coaching within like you know eight miles of each other, and you would have in any given year, you know, like ten or twelve high major recruits that could play anywhere in the country. And uh, so there's no better place than like North Jersey for basketball, uh, like during that time in the 2000s. Yeah. Can you yeah. look around the country and say, okay, California kids play, you know, this style. Yeah. North Jersey kids play this style. Florida yeah, kids yeah. play this style. Yeah, yeah, there is definitely. You know, there's definitely, you see the differences, you know, with like a team from Philly or, you know, a, a, you know an AAU team from, from New York City versus, you know, like a, like a West Coast team. And even like one of our key ingredients to uh, with this year's team, Joey California. Yeah, like, I wasn't sure that it would would translate. You know, just it would have to kind of you know the guts to do it in the Big East. But you know, Joey pulled it off. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was awesome. He Dude, was awesome. It's like a, a character from Top Gun, Joey. Right, like you could have <laughs> easily been a, a Ice Man. Or <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There was one moment at the end of the game I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, you got your son in the game he played in every tournament game yep which credit to you 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 were looking out for him you got him some minutes there <laughs> at the end uh he looked like he wanted to pull up a three at the end of the game and i saw you on the sidelines and he had the ball in his hand and it looked like you told him don't shoot it and he listened to you in that moment but probably in the back of his mind he's like i just wish i could have gotten that shot i wish i could have gotten on the on yeah. the stat sheet yeah yeah i mean he doesn't listen to me it's like any <laughs> just like any kid his age he doesn't listen to me he goes to his mother a lot more times because she's going to tell him what he wants to hear. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to be more honest with him. And uh, he desperately wanted to shoot. He was very assertive and very aggressive throughout the tournament. You know, he either rebounded the ball, got a steal, or fouled. He's fouling the shit out of people, too. <laughs> and then he took back to back threes, I think, in Albany. First one he almost had on a step back you know, versus scholarship guy. And then I think he might have airballed the second shot. Yeah. You know, so we met after at the hotel. <laughs> that would have been very funny, we though. Heard our efficiency. <laughs> yeah. You're telling him not to shoot in the last seconds, and then he finds his mom in the stands. He's like, Mom, can I shoot? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, go yeah, for yeah, it. Right. Yeah. Like, she's go like right it. over my head. You got this. Yeah, he turned the ball over against Miami. 
picked up a five second violation at the end of that Miami game. So he did not have a clean sheet in the NCAA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it was an incredible run. I'm happy I wasn't the mush. I told you that I I was afraid for a while. Good news is I had Max going the other way, which I think he's the actual mush. So he helped us out. My last question, and this has been awesome. Well, you have to get us our painting. Yeah. You 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 guaranteed that. Um, I took a look around. Yeah, I, you I did a mental everything snapshot. I need to know. <laughs> yeah. Right now. So uh, I'm always curious with this with coaches. So you win the title. Obviously, it's incredible. Your roster's incredible. A guy like Jordan Hawkins, who's going to most likely be a lottery pick. What is the conversation with him? Are you? Is there any part of you that's like, come on, just come back one more? Or are you just because because no. that always uh, you know selfishly, if I was in that shoes, I'd be like. Come on, man. Let's run it back because you want to. You want to. You obviously want yeah, the yeah. success, but you also want him to yeah, yeah. live his dreams. Can't do it unless you think a kid's making a mistake. Yeah, you know, unless you think a kid is not ready, um, or he can really increase his chances. Like you know, Book Knight, at the end of his freshman year, you know, James Book Knight could have gone like late first. He was crushing at the end of his freshman year. Yeah, you know, but we knew that you know he could become a lottery pick and he could make a lot more money by coming back to college. You know, I think you just, each situation, uh, you do what's in the best interest of the kid. You try not to think selfishly about it whatsoever. Uh, um, even Andre Jackson, I mean, he's one that we're, you know, that one that's probably going to play out over the course of the next month. If he can be a first round pick, you know, he's got to go. Um, if he's not a first round pick, the way it's set up in college now, it probably makes more sense to, if you have the ability to get there, go back and get better in college. There's NIL. Um, if you're going, you know, if you're on a team like ours, which, you know, we're not going anywhere. We're going to have a chance to field the team next year with Klingon and Caravan and a bunch of these guys. We were that we're going to return. We got a top recruiting class coming in. I plan for Jordan Hawkins to leave. Yeah, uh, you know, you plan for like Sonogo Hawkins potentially Andre going out the door this year before the season, and you make sure you have a top recruiting class coming in like we do. And now we'll go in the portal and make some strategic. I would have. I'd be the worst coach because I would sit down, Jordan Hawkins, and be like, "Listen, buddy, if you don't come back, I'm gonna bash you to everyone." No, <laughs> Just no like, like come back, big cat. Please like I'm telling, telling you, it's like you're. It's gonna be so easy. It's gonna be so much easier to get the next kid. Like yeah, true. Him. Long picture. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're thinking big picture. I'm thinking like big I want to win again right away with the same guy. Yeah, and I know what we got coming in with the freshman class, man. It's like I got five big time players. Coming. Are you, Are you gonna go to the draft? Yeah, yeah, and we missed Book Night's draft because uh, myself and Kamani Young, we got COVID. Oh. Like, literally the day of it, and they they they, uh, they sent us home. Okay, so, the so we watched I mean, Book that's, Night. That's going to be a very cool moment to go to the draft with yeah, some of these guys. Yeah, that's going to be awesome, man. That'll, that'll, that'll rival winning it. Yeah. Man. That'll rival winning it. Yeah, some coaches say it's better. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah I think so, because it's like these families, man, like the Hawkins family, the Jackson family, you know, potentially Sonogo, man, like these, uh, you know, you're just so proud. It's life-changing moments. Yeah, yeah. And there's a deep connection you're going to have with these guys for the rest of their lives. That's very cool. That's got to be a cool moment as yes, a coach. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, my last question has to do with your underwear. So the lucky <laughs> underwear. Was, yeah. it, was it dragon underwear? Dragons, that, man. That you wore for every season? Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that you washed it in between, yes. in between every game? Yeah, in between every game. Like that, you know, like they used to do it in the old, like the olden days with the the washboards. <laughs> scrub type it. Yeah, yeah, you got to scrub them good. You just fill the sink up with soap water yeah, in the yeah. hotel. You put the underwear in there. You set up the hair dryers. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> are, we, are we retiring that set of underwear? Underwear? Are we bringing it back next year's tournament? Are we going to hang it up like a banner? It wasn't. It, it's like first of all, it's um, it's like a three. There's like three pairs of them. It's it's great white sharks. It's it's wolves. There's a pair of lions, and then there's uh, there's the dragons. Dragons. So it's actually four different underwear. They rotate, and when you get to the postseason, you just go with who who brought the you. best season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then exactly. you just go with that. You keep oh, we stats. need some. Yeah. We need some analytics next year. Yeah, which so <laughs> yeah. What was the we, we'll we'll run that for you if you if you want to have I, one of your yeah. you know uh, GAs or someone just shoot it shoot Jake a note <laughs> being like yeah Danny's wearing this tonight yeah. and then we'll mm -hmm. just run the stats and we'll put out a graphic after every yeah. game and like he's three and one with the yes. dragons yeah 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 he's four and zero oh with the wolves <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they sent me a big box too there's like a hundred pairs of them <laughs> and some of them are boxers and bikinis and they're all different sizes. I just don't know what to do with you them. You got to wear the bikini you know? went to Maui. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, do I just take them and, like, throw them out of the back of my truck? I, can't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with these underwear. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Coach. Max, any last words? Because you, you've been the biggest loser in, in the month of March. 
Yeah, no. Uh, I'm a big loser. You're a big winner. Um, <laughs> that's basically all I have to say. Okay, all and right. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome for me rooting against you for every day. <laughs> yeah, so there it is. Uh, thanks so much, Coach. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Max. <laughs> Dan Hurley was brought to you by our good friends at the Black Tux. Not to get all parental, but it's time we had the talk. You know, the one about that three-letter word, it ends in X. You'll probably experience it a few times in your life. Nope, not that one. I'm talking about a tux. And when you need a tux, the best place to go get one is the Black Tux. The Black Tux makes it super easy to get an on-trend, top-quality, guaranteed-to-fit tux without ever leaving your house. Here's how it works. You take the Black Tux Fit Quiz... Pick the style you want to rock, and boom, your tux is delivered to your door 10 days before the day you need it. That's plenty of time to try it on and make sure it wears you well. I was actually wearing the black tux. It was during the episode where Dan Snyder sold the Washington Commanders for the third time. Yes. so I wore it for the Final Four. You wore it for the Final Four. I'll wear the black tux to the Dan Snyder goodbye parade. Yeah. I'm wearing one for the case race. Let's go. Okay. Black tux is all around for the boys. If the fit's not quite right, say hello to the black tux fit guarantee. You can order a better size within a day or two of receiving the less than great fitting one, and they'll send another one right away. No extra cost. And if you'd prefer an in-store experience, they got you covered there too because the Black Tux has showrooms all across the country. They have expert fit specialists that will help you find the perfect style tux or suit. Make sure that it fits just right. We love the Black Tux. Billy, you have an upcoming special event with the Black Tux? Yeah. What's uh, that? A wedding. Okay, and so, hell yeah! So you like the black tux? Congratulations! Yeah, Billy. congrats on getting married. Congrats, Billy! No, no, no the, the the wedding, someone else's wedding. Oh, oh, okay. Your, yeah. your fiance's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have a wedding, a prom, or a special event, the black tux is the best place to go when you need to buy or rent a tuxedo. It is wedding season, though. If you're yeah. in, if you're in like your mid twenties uh, to about your mid thirties, you basically spend those ten years of your life. Traveling to weddings every summer. That's how you spend your money. You want to look good at the at the uh, events, and the Black Tux is the way to do it. Great tuxedos. Go to theblacktux.com slash PMT. Use code PMT to save 30 bucks off your order. Theblacktux.com slash PMT. Promo code PMT to save $30 off your order. And now, here's Kirk Goldsberry. Okay, we now welcome on one of our best friends, recurring guest, teacher of young minds, uh, Kirk Goldsberry. We're going to talk a little NBA playoffs. we got to get a little preview going for the people. Uh, the playoffs start in earnest on Saturday. We're going to run this on Friday. Let's start here, though, Kirk. Playing games. Uh, we saw on Wednesday night, DeMar DeRozan's daughter, DR DeRozan, maybe the greatest free throw defensive performance that a, te a team has ever displayed. She was screaming in every Raptors shot. They went 18 for 36 from the free throw line in a game that the Bulls won by like four points. Can you quantify what she did for the Bulls Dude. on Wednesday night? I've never seen anything like it, uh, but whatever happened, the free throws cost them that game. I think the Raptors, like you said, missed 18 free throws. And, and from our friends at ESPN and Stats and Info, that's the most in a winner-take-all playoff or play-in game, Big Cat, since – the Lakers missed 19 in game seven of the 1969 Whoa. NBA finals. So historically bad. And you got to credit DeMar's little daughter for, for disrupting them at the line. What else can explain that? It, it was incredible fix. on like kind of a, a halfway serious note from that. Is there something that you can put together where you can quantify where teams overall are the worst at shooting free throws? Like what is the hardest place to shoot a free throw in the NBA? <laughs> You got to guess. I would. I would guess it's road environments like uh, Boston or Oklahoma City, where the crowd's really loud. But yeah, that that leads us back to Dr. Who, you know, that washed across my Twitter feed, and I was like, whatever, this isn't. And then you click on it, and that noise was legitimately upsetting and disruptive. You know, we're all human beings big cat you're the you're the baller of the group if you were shooting free throws do you think that noise would get to you yeah well maybe it would help me because i'm not a great free throw shooter but it was it was crazy it was like the, she's actually impacting the game here i i will not i will not hear otherwise you just said it the most missed free throw since 1969 in a play in a an elimination game in the playoffs that's insane yeah, and it was it, the sound in that quiet gym. It jumped off the uh, off the speakers, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it was it was. That's why I love the playoffs. I guess the play in here 
Yeah. You never know what's going to happen, guys. And that was just an unprecedented moment. <laughs> so so about the play-in, um, we had the take on Wednesday. In theory, I'm not opposed to the play-in. My problem with it is that the NBA playoffs usually go somewhat to script that the top seeds usually advance, and it's very hard for a seven or eight seed. You know, eight seed, I think it's only happened like two or three times. One of them was an injury. The other was a famous uh, Dikembe Mutombo uh, Nuggets team when, in a five-game series. So do any of these teams have a shot of making noise, and specifically the Lakers, because that feels like everyone's pick of like, hey, watch out, the Lakers are now in the playoffs. Do they have a chance of going on a deep run? Yeah, I think the Lakers are the obvious choice, and I know we'll talk a lot about them, Big Cat, but I love the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, you know, they have an all NBA guard who was the best player in the game uh, Wednesday night as, as the Thunder beat the Pelicans. And if I'm sitting there and I'm the Denver Nuggets, I'm not scared, but that that looks like a tougher team to beat than a normal eight seed. Or And, and certainly the Grizzlies are now looking at the Lakers as a seventh seed. In the East, I don't think it's very scary. I don't think either the Bucks or Celtics, who are sitting there one or two, are worried about whoever comes out of this, this play-in tournament. Uh, but the West is a different story, and that's one of the big themes. Uh, the West is topsy-turvy. And the Lakers are emergent, the Warriors are emergent, and the Suns are emergent. Like some of the best teams in terms of the betting markets are at the bottom half of the bracket, in part because they have dudes that we've seen win the finals. We've had all these finals MVPs in the bottom of the Western bracket. But the Lakers, to me, are the scariest team to ever come out of the play in tournament. Does that mean they're going to the finals? Of course not. But geez, the yeah, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, that's a pretty scary seven scene, don't you think? Yeah. The long history, the vaunted history of the play in tournament. The Lakers are, are the best <laughs> team to emerge from that. Uh, I think Patrick Beverly is the best player to emerge from the play in tournament. Play in P. Well, I think Caruso, who reminds me of Matthew Delavadova a little bit, PFT, yeah. I think he'd like that comp. Uh, uh, but in all seriousness, the lineups that Chicago, Chicago's good on defense now. Yeah. And. The, the the Beverly Caruso combo, they're able to mess with opposing backcourts uh, in a way that just disrupts things. And I think Caruso played incredible last night. Beverly gives every team he plays on that sort of personality implant that changes the vibe in every gym he walks into. Uh, and he's toughened up that Bulls defense. And that's their defining uh, Trey going into Friday's game against uh, Miami in Miami. And they could certainly win that Yeah, the way they play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can, can you quantify uh, how much of an impact Pat Bev actually makes? Because Russell Westbrook had the famous quote, Pat Bev trick y'all, man. Like he playing defense, he don't guard nobody. He just run around doing nothing. Does Patrick Beverly just run around doing nothing? Or is he actually... <laughs> Is he actually a good defensive player in crunch time? Uh, both can be true. I think PFD, the bark is louder than the bite. Uh, in his case, uh, analytically, he doesn't show up. But, man, you can't argue with some of the teams he's played on how they've ramped up their defensive effectiveness with him on the court analytically and with the eye test. Uh, I, I think the Bulls have a pretty low ceiling this year, um, but that ceiling's higher than it was before he got there. I think he's added a toughness. That defense is starting to jump off the page. Simply put, it's one of the best defenses in the NBA uh, in the last uh, few weeks. And I think that has a lot to do with him and Caruso being healthy. It's too bad they don't have Lonzo Ball. Uh, but it's also a major accomplishment, Big Cat, because your team with Vucevic, Levine, and DeMar, you're telling me that it's somehow a decent defense? Yeah. That's one of the biggest upsets of the second half of the NBA season. And PFT, I give credit uh, to Beverly and Caruso. Uh, for that, not to mention the coaches, obviously. Mm -hmm. I do always feel bad when Vooch gets stuck in a pick and roll out on the perimeter, and you're like, "What? This? He's gonna? There's a 50-50 chance he trips over his own feet here." So, um, let's stick with let's let's do a little East talk. Uh, the Bucks. I think everyone expects them to be there, uh, at least to the conference final. The Celtics and Sixers. Let's start with the Celtics. The Hank's not in the room right now. But the, I feel like I've heard a prevailing theory that maybe the Celtics are better when Marcus Smart isn't on the court. Um, is there anything to back up that that anecdotal feeling? And what it, what kind of has happened? Like with you know last year, he was Defensive Player of the Year. This year, he, I think he's had some injuries, but it does feel a little different than it did last year. Yeah, the short answer is Malcolm Brogdon, who they brought in in the off season, and he's great, and he is a nice player to have, and. They have Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, and now Marcus Smart fighting for those slots in the backcourt, uh, Big Cat. And I, I think, you know, 
they're both better offensive players, Brogdon and White, than, than Marcus Smart is right now. And none of them are going to win Defensive Player of the Year like Marcus did last year. Uh, but they're pretty good on that end. And and But to answer your question, and this is going to be a theme today, the regular season and the playoffs are different animals. What this team has with Marcus, Malcolm, and Derek in the, in the backcourt is flexibility. There are going to be matchups that Marcus is going to be the right answer. There's going to be moments when – when and and Derek and Malcolm are the right answer. And so one of the things I'm watching with the Celtics who have a great shot to come out of the East uh, is how Missoula, their first year coach is going to use their rotations against certain teams. Um, because as you know, there's only five guys allowed on the court at any given time. And the Celtics are pretty deep. The backcourt's only part of that. Uh, but how is Marcus going to fit in? He's going to start, but who's going to finish and why? That's a big set of questions for for the Celtics going into this uh, playoff season. What teams in the East are built for the regular season that have the the biggest likelihood of sliding back in a seven game series, as opposed to like, is there another team out there that was not built for the regular season that is definitely built for the playoffs? The, the obvious answer here is uh, the one that has James Harden on it, uh, and <laughs> that's a that's a tough reality. <laughs> that's a tough reality. Good point. But until until we see it, PFT, you know, it's fair to hang that on him a little bit. And if there's one player and one team who has sort of a legacy at stake this postseason, Chris then it's, it's the Philadelphia 76ers. And the other one I would say is Doc Rivers is part of that. It's not just James. Yeah. Doc Rivers hasn't been a great playoff coach in the last five, ten years either. Um, and so that's that's the obvious answer. I love this Sixers. Uh, team obviously Embiid might be the best player in the league it's either him or Giannis probably on both ends of the court uh, but yeah those dudes have a lot at stake and if there's one team that we can't really count on in this group of, of top eastern teams going into this playoffs it's fair to say that's Philadelphia All right, what, what about the opposite of that what's one team that is you know maybe they they slept walked a little bit in the regular season but come playoff time they can flip the switch um I wouldn't say they slept walk because because Giannis is incredible uh, but Chris Middleton was not there for most of the season. And Chris Middleton is one of the big X factors in this playoffs. The last time this team was whole in the playoffs, they won the NBA championship. I think there's something like 27 and five, 28 and five since Middleton's come back. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks did not sleepwalk through anything, but their ceiling is very obviously the championship if they're healthy. Uh, and last time they were healthy, as I mentioned, they, they can beat anybody. Um, so I think that would be my answer. I also love this Cleveland Cavaliers team. Yeah. Uh, I think they're, they're really great on defense, but they also have that, that, that Donovan Mitchell factor and Darius Garland in the backcourt that can score on anyone in crunch time. And so I'm really eager to see how they do. Uh, I, I don't think they're at the status of Milwaukee or Boston yet, guys. Uh, but that team, I'm, I'm I'm buying stock on them winning a title in the 2020s. Oh wow! Uh, and they could they could surprise they could surprise this year. Yeah, and that happens in the playoffs. Sometimes you get ahead of schedule, like that Thunder team in 2011. Yeah, the, uh, the, or 2010, I should say. The interesting thing with the Cavs is, uh, I I mean, I love the storyline. Donovan Mitchell, you know, with the Knicks was it looked like it was going to happen, didn't happen. He is the quintessential guy who like can win you a game, but can also lose you a game by trying to win you a game too hard. Uh, that series specifically should be great. Is there anything to be said for, I love Tibbs as a coach, but I, I, I witnessed this and felt this personally uh, that he gets the most out of his guys in the regular season. And then when you get to the playoffs, finding that extra gear, kind of like what PFT and, and you guys were talking about there with the Bucks finding that extra gear. There is no extra gear for the Knicks. They are what they are. They tried really hard. They always give max effort. In February, it can win you a lot of games, but come April, May, June, there's not that extra gear that they can find and, and beat some of these elite teams. Yeah, a couple things I'll say to that. Um, first of all, if I was in New York City over the next couple weeks, I'd get to Madison Square Garden because playoff basketball there, guys, is – special it is one of my favorite things on the planet so please at least one of you go to one of those games i think nick's emergence now they landed at five this is a successful season um the jalen brunson acquisition has been great their offense is very good uh but i'm not picking them to win their first round series because they're playing just a stacked Cavs team and that's a tough four seed um i think you gotta look forward as the knicks are going from bad to good this sort of being a transitional year. We're a first-round playoff team. I think they have a lot to build on. 
Tibbs has that reputation, and it's it's fair. He uses his starting group a lot. Um, but this team has a little depth, and the bench players in the backcourt can make things happen. I wouldn't be shocked if they win, but I, I think the Cavs are the right choice there. What about yeah. the Miami Heat? Are they officially dead? I think we pronounced them dead. <laughs> like the entire, the entire culture. Dead. The culture died. Dude, it's so hard. It's so hard to rule these guys out. I think there's a world where three weeks from now we're still talking about them because they somehow pulled themselves out of this 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 grave that, that seems like they're in. But it, doesn't it seem like it? You know, it seems like they got their butts kicked on the glass in a way that a Miami team just doesn't get. That doesn't happen. And it wasn't exactly Dennis Rodman out there. Clint Capella is a great player. The Hawks are a talented front court, but that was a butt whooping on the glass. They need to have more from Bam Adebayo going forward, and Jimmy Butler didn't have it going. Uh, they need more Tyler Harrow. But, yeah, if they lose to this Chicago team, um, I think it's time to change some things in Miami, and I think whatever arrow we just watched, which is undeniably successful, guys, getting to the finals, um, might have to might have to end, and they might have to make some big changes. So heat culture, I think, can survive regime changes and, and personnel turnover. I, I do think it starts with Riley and Spolstra, and I do have a lot of respect for that organization, guys. But, yeah, it seems like we're at the end of a personnel run here if they lose. Duncan Robinson needs more minutes. That's what I'm hearing from you. <laughs> Duncan Robinson is uh, one of the best catch-and-shoot guys in the league, but – I don't think they've they've liked what they've seen when he's been on the court. So I'll trust Eric Spolster with the lineup stuff, but this team just might not have enough power to get through um, the first round, even the playing tournament. Okay, so out in the West, a um, couple yeah. questions, a couple teams I want to touch on. I want you to make a prediction about how the Suns are the greatest offensive team you've ever seen just so that they can lose in the first round and we can laugh at you. Uh, but let's start with them. They have – when Kevin Durant has been healthy, they have – I think they haven't lost. Now, is that right. their competition – or is that this team is that scary and uh, you you feel most confident by, like backing them in the West playoffs? Well, I, I think the definitive theme of the Western Conference this year is WTF. I don't I don't think I'll ever come on here with you guys in another postseason preview and and just throw out this kind of concept that the West is drunk. Nobody has any idea what to happen. You can't make sense to the regular season numbers. Look, I use regular season numbers to try to predict, but the Suns weren't the. Suns and the Lakers weren't the Lakers until very late in the season. They're two of the betting favorites now to come out of the West. Uh, and the Warriors haven't been right all year. So it's topsy turvy. I will predict that the Suns are going to come out of the West. It hinges on Kevin Durant's health. Uh, he is such an incredible scorer, big cat. He's the first scorer in NBA history to put up 55, 40, 90 numbers for a season. Uh, he's just insane. He can get shots against any defender in the league and, and and convert them at a high rate. You factor in the fact they also have Devin Booker and Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton, um, TJ Warren, some nice supporting pieces. They deserve to be the favorites, but it all hinges on the health of one dude. And that's yeah. that's obviously Durant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about what about our Kings, our beloved Kings Ooh. up in Sacramento? Um they they had a great regular season. I feel like people yeah. are are like patting the Kings on the head and being like, that was really cute what you guys did. Great job. I'm proud of you guys. But are they actually a threat? Are the Kings a threat to come out of the West? PFT, what did the enchiladas and moss uh, t-shirts say? Uh, never trust a skinny cook. Mm. One of our favorite sayings down here in Austin. Yep. And I say never trust a thin defense. And that's exactly what the Sacramento Kings are this season. They are the best offense in the league. Credit to them. Credit to Mike Brown, Aaron Fox. The bonus have been great. They're the number 24th ranked defense. And simply said, I've never seen a defense ranked that low do much in the playoffs. Uh, add in, they got obviously a horrible draw in the Western Conference first round against the defending champs and one of the dynasties of recent pro basketball history. Uh, so it, the, the, it's, I'm not ruling them out by any means, but they got to get stops. They got to show me stuff on defense they haven't been able to show me uh, this season. Uh, I just think the West, especially the lower half of the bracket, is so. Look, I think it's 10 of the last 11 finals MVPs, guys, are in four through eight seeds in the West right now. So you have dudes like Durant, Curry, Kawhi and LeBron these aren't typical four or five six seven seeds and that's what this unproven top tier in the west that includes Sacramento that includes a banged up Memphis team and then includes an unproven Nuggets team is staring at it's not a normal year 
in part because they're unproven, but in part because that bottom half of the bracket is the Illuminati. And and they're, they're going to run into tough matchups earlier in their playoff runs than they would in normal years. So about the Nuggets, uh, could we go with maybe the theory that uh, it looks like Embiid is the MVP, so now the pressure is off? Because there has been yeah. some backlash to Jokic winning. It looked like for a while there he's going to win th- his third straight MVP, and they haven't done much in the playoffs. Is this any different than the past few years for the Nuggets? Like, what is – if you're a Nuggets fan – how are you gearing up for the playoffs mentally saying, no, it's not going to be another disappointing second round exit? Well, you're the one seed. And I would say this about any one seed. If you're the one seed, you're slated to go to the finals. If the seeds hold at worst conference finals, if this team doesn't get to the Western conference finals, big cat, it's a disappointment. Uh, and it's it's a particularly powerful disappointment for a team that's that's failed to get over the hump with an MVP for the last few years. Now they have a very good excuse that their supporting cast has been just destroyed with injuries in some of these previous runs. Still said they're the number one seed, and it's fair to hang that big conference finals expectation on them. And again, I go back to the bizarre nature of this playoff bracket. Their second round opponent is likely going to be somebody like Kevin Durant and the Suns or Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers, not a normal second round opponent. Uh, And there's a world where they get bounced in the second round and at that point it's it's almost like i'm trying to think of an nfl example like those bills teams at that in the, the jim kelly era it's like you just can't do it guys you can get close but you just can't they're going to start getting that reputation fair or not that's the industry i work in and people are going to start saying that this team can't get it done when it matters most and that's that's unfortunately what's at stake for them this year uh if they can't make a big deep run uh, you, towards the finals are they they're healthier do you have any any confidence whatsoever in them being able to handle a Clippers or Suns team in the second round? Uh, more than I have when they were always injured. I think they're pretty deep this time around. Their offense is going to score against anybody. And Jokic can score against anybody as a scorer himself or obviously as a playmaker. Um, you add Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, they have a core of guys that's going to score. The big questions, like with Sacramento, are on the other side of the court. Are they going to be able to get stops against this Suns team that includes like potentially three Hall of Famers in the starting five, including a great point guard, the best shooter in the league, and, 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 our, and Kevin Durant, uh, the best scorer in the league, I should say, Steph, best shooter, Steph Curry. Uh, but And also Devin Booker. When Devin Booker is your second option, I mean, that's terrifying. And and my big question for Denver, is that defense going to be able to stop a team like that in the second round? I think that's where I'm zeroing in. And and I'm not confident they will be, Big Cat. Yeah. You worked with Kawhi in, uh, in San Antonio. You saw him get ready for the playoffs. Does he ever get amped up? Does he ever – is he ever fired up going into even like some of the biggest games of his career? Or is he 100% across the board just like flatlining, just a robot? Uh I don't like when people call him a robot uh, because I've seen him do incredible things as a human being uh, that 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 defied expectations and proved that he was up for the moment. The ones that, that stick out to me are the the early in his career, the defensive performances against LeBron James. Nobody in the world expected him to do that. So obviously his preparation, his mentality, and you can't – he's a lot like Tim Duncan in the sense that no trash talker in, in, in Duncan State with his Garnett is going to get through – Kawhi. Uh, Pat Bev can get under almost anybody's skin. He's not going to annoy Kawhi. And I, I do think that's one of his best traits is that as, as intense as these games can be in the springtime in the NBA, Kawhi's unflappable. Uh, and people call him a robot, whatever. But like to me, he's obviously prepared. He's one of the best postseason players when he's healthy. Look at what he did in 2019. Um, look at what he did for 2014 Spurs. He has that in him, um, and obviously they've been bitten by the injury bug too. The Clippers, with Paul George likely to miss this whole first round series, but the Clippers are also a very dangerous team, uh, with or without Paul George. If Kawhi Leonard is, if you're telling me he's playing his best basketball, he hasn't lost many playoff series when he's done that. Yeah, um, and so I think he's a very dangerous team. I guess when I call him a robot, I, normally I would be using that as like you know an insult to somebody, but with Kawhi, I think maybe we just need to rebrand like he's an assassin, just cold yeah, blooded. And, yeah, <laughs> there's something weird about his, his 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 demeanor. I'll give you that. It's, it's very unusual. He's not a very vocal leader, obviously. Um, 
but it's terrifying. It's terrifying for every team he plays against because I love his game on offense now. He he deserves a lot of credit because here, here's what I'd say about him. When we had him in San Antonio, he was in the midst of probably the most impressive player development arc I've ever seen. Going from a guy who, quote unquote, couldn't shoot. Go back and read the scouting reports when he came out of the draft. I can't shoot. Worst shooter in his position group in his class. Now he's one of the best mid-range scorers on the planet. Can hit threes off the dribble. Has these little half hooks. Can finish. Can dunk. Obviously, he has that historic uh, game-winning uh, baseline shot over Embiid in the 2019 playoffs. Uh, he is built for playoff war, and if you want to call him an assassin, I think that's a better a better fit PFT because he can he can go out and win a game or a series um, with his scoring and obviously his defense. Everybody knows about that too. Yeah. Uh, so defense has been a theme in this conversation. Obviously, talking about the Nuggets and the Kings and their defensive inefficiencies. Not statistically speaking, but more in your trust factor. Who are the top yeah. two defenses in each East and West? Because like you could you could possibly say the Warriors, even though they're you know they've been terrible on the road, but those guys all know each other so well and the way they rotate and everything. So who are the two teams that you trust most defensively in the East and the West? Well, I'll answer the question, and I'll, and I'll answer, it, but it skews East, big cat, because you're going to make me not say Cleveland, and they're probably the third best defense in these playoffs. So I'm going to say I've seen Boston and I've seen Milwaukee play great defense in the postseason i'm waiting for cleveland to show it to me and i bet they will um so i'm going to say just for this if you're giving me Giannis and brooke lopez and drew holiday in a playoff series i'm taking them that defense is just talk about stacked everybody uh and they know each other they have that familiar chemistry they they they, pre they can predict where each other so milwaukee and then boston we've seen them um Boston, by the way, one of three teams in the last 25 years to finish in both top two offense and top two defense in the regular season. The other two are the Warriors teams uh, that won it all. So th that's a big sign for the Boston defense. And then on the other side, one of the hot take answers is the Lakers. Yeah. And if you look at the, at the Lakers since the trade deadline, they've been the best defense in the Western Conference, Big Cat. And so when they won it all in the bubble, uh, again, which I know you guys have a, have a strong doesn't count. I don't that. remember. Doesn't count. That. Doesn't count. Don't yeah. recall. Doesn't count. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but I, <laughs> COVID. Uh, yeah. But the, What's that? COVID's the Lakers, over. The Lakers. The Lakers defense, and and I'll throw. Geez, it's tough to find a second one, which might be the takeaway. It's Memphis, but they're banged up. Memphis built around Jaron Jackson, who is the human personal foul, but also the best <laughs> rim protector when he's able to stay in games. Uh, but the big thing with Memphis's defense is without Stephen Jackson. Uh, and without Brandon Clark, we're both out. Uh, Jaron Jackson has to stay out of foul trouble or else we're going to see dudes like Xavier Tillman or, or Kenneth Lofton, our favorite, trying to stop LeBron and AD. So I don't know if I trust that one because of injury problems, but the right answer is Los Angeles and Memphis on the West. It, it, when you say Lakers, I know that the it, like all the numbers say it, but is it fair to say that LeBron might be the, the weak link on their defense? Because I maybe it's just he knows how to coast. But there were times yeah. on on Tuesday night where he was just standing in the paint and his guy was standing out on the three point line getting free threes. Like he just doesn't. Sometimes it feels like he takes quarters or possessions, long stretches where he's like, "I'm not going to play defense. I'm going to focus on offense, and I'll worry about the defense later." Is it fair to say though that he would be the weak link uh, defensively for them? Which is crazy. It's. it's it's, it's the right question. It reminds me of playing pickup and somebody talks you into playing that fourth or fifth game and you just can't move anymore. Uh, and that's what defense looks like. I was shocked to see LeBron's defense in that playing game. Um, the greatest play of LeBron's career remains a defensive play. He can still guard almost anyone, but it looks like he's coasting. And that's your word. And I, I think that's fair to say. I, I'm not saying he's the weak link, but it, it is age with his mileage. Uh, and what we saw uh, this week in the playing game, uh, it's fair to question whether he's going to have that sort of defensive stamina that he's had in years past, where he was, in many cases, the best defensive player in a series like this. Uh, he's he's probably not. Anthony Davis is great deodorant on the backside for that team. He'll clean up a lot of the messes. Uh, but yeah, LeBron, as a defender, probably not what he was in his peak. Big it's yeah. interesting because you could spin that and, and say, well, if their weak link on defense is LeBron James, they're a pretty fucking good defense. Well, they put this, yeah, they put this up, PFT, with the, they put up these incredible record at uh, 19 and nine since the trade deadline. Uh, that's 68% uh, winning percentage would be better than every team in the league except Milwaukee and Boston over the course of the year. 
But what a lot of people forget is they did that without LeBron most of the games. Yeah. That's to me the scariest thing. It's like, okay, now you're adding LeBron, the quote unquote weak link on defense to a team that was really good after the trade deadline. So I think when people, you know, joke about ESPN loving the Lakers, it, Dude, LeBron's been to nine of the last 12 finals. <laughs> it's not like a hot take to say that they might have a run in him here. Uh, he he wins his conference more than he doesn't since like 2010. So, you know, the, the top of the West is sketchy. And if, if you're Durant or if you're Kawhi or if you're Steph, and certainly if you're LeBron James, you're not afraid of those top three seeds. So, I think it's just a fascinating bracket in the Western Conference, and LeBron James might be the most interesting person in the whole thing. Well, yeah. I heard two things. I heard the if their weak link is LeBron James on defense, that's pretty good for the Lakers. It is. And I also heard that the Lakers might be better without LeBron James mm. because they're <laughs> so good since the trade deadline when he hasn't been playing. Actually, it was the 23 most important games yeah. of LeBron James' career in that by sitting out, he made his team better. Yeah. He really pulled out all the stuff. He went zero dark 30 on the court this time. <laughs> I totally forgot about that quote, but, but it sort of rings true. And maybe, you know, he sat out because he had to, but the team like got into shape and became good. And, and now they have him. I think those were among the most, at least in later LeBron history, like they're a scary team. They were not a scary team in January. They so, were a bad team. I just yeah. started two and 10. They I, were terrible. Now they're, now they're scary. I just want them to be washed up. It's not fair. He's fucking going to be 39. Like, he can't. Come on, dude. He can't keep doing this. He can't keep getting away with this. I love it. it to me, it reminds me of an, an old school Brady season. I mean, old school, like six years ago when he was 39 <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But... <laughs> yeah. You're going to be you're gonna be sad when it's gone. And it's not going to give you guys the content that you want when he's gone. And this could be literally one of the most important post seasons of his incredible career if he's able to make noise and get this team over. Um, but, you know, he's the all-time leading scorer. He's not even known as a scorer. He's an incredible playmaker, a great defender when he has the juice. Um, and Memphis is just the one thing I'm looking, I'll bring it back to Jaron Jackson, is if LeBron and AD can do anything on offense, it's pressure the heck out of the rim. Jaron Jackson is the best rim protector in the league, and he's the most in person, important person in that series, guys, because as I said, he's always in foul trouble. Their defensive front court is thinned out because of the injuries I mentioned to Jackson, uh, Stephen, and uh, Adams, I should say, and to uh, Brandon Clark. But if they get Jaron Jackson in foul trouble with, and, and LeBron's getting whistles, because you guys know this stat too, that free throw differential stat I've heard mm -hmm. you guys throw around, that's a real thing. They get whistles. Sometimes you can say it's conspiracy, but others say it's just because they, they pressure the rim and they, they're very difficult to guard. Either way, Jaron Jackson's foul trouble is the thing to watch with that series. If he's able to play 40 minutes a game, I like Memphis. If he's in foul trouble, I'll take the Lakers. So officially, the Kirk Goldsberry uh, notice is you're putting you're putting the Grizzlies on notice. I'm putting the Grizzlies on upset notice, PFT. Okay. Um, in part because I love Stephen Adams, who is like the fullback of the NBA. He mm -hmm. is a incredible rebounder and this team did two things memphis grizzlies aside from defense on offense they did two things very well with adams uh they were great in transition that's still there but they led the league in second chance points because he was the best offensive rebounder in the league without him they're struggling in their half court offense because they don't have those second chance points uh and and i just you know i wish they were whole because they were so good um, but but with this thinned out version, the Lakers have a real shot of, of upsetting them in this 7-2 matchup. Okay, so uh, my last question. We did you kind of dirty last year. Actually, you did yourself dirty when you said the Nets were the best offense you've ever seen. It was maybe two years ago, and then they got uh, bounced from the playoffs. So I'll let you do uh, a finals prediction, and I'll let you do a backup finals prediction. And oh, then I if either it. of them become true, we will post it. Our word, we will post it and be like, look, Kirk is – a genius he got it right he did it again holy shit so first finals prediction first finals prediction is a 2021 rematch bucks Suns, and i love both teams assuming health chris middleton i'm watching gosh gotta get through the the first second third fourth rounds if they're gonna win the title chris middleton is is a hugely important piece we've gone over that same obviously with durant and chris paul I think if either of those guys has to miss games, which is reasonable to expect, unfortunately, 
that Suns prediction would fall apart pretty fast. Um, there's just too many other teams out there that 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 can beat them. So my first Suns, my first is Suns uh, Bucks, and I'd take the Bucks in that matchup. Okay, and then your second prediction that we will put out there if Suns Bucks doesn't happen. Um, my second prediction, and I'll pause so you can edit it out. Yeah, well, let me reset. I'll reset for you. Hey, Kirk, uh, my rowback question. Last question, rowback.com. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies. Rowback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Kirk, who do you have? Your rowback question, who do you have in the finals? Well, thanks for sending me all the rowback. I'm going to go with a 2022 finals rematch <laughs> of the Celtics and Warriors. I mean, I just... I think that this season has 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 been a one big sort of uh, mirage, and these are the two best teams in the league. So I'm going to go Celtics and Warriors, and this time, guys, I'm taking the Celtics. Oh, do you wanna, okay. Do you want to uh, give them a third shot? Yeah, yeah. Do you want a third shot? Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah you hey, said it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the Roback Plus question. Roback Plus. We're giving an additional twenty percent off. They're already low, low prices with promo code Take. Uh, we'll send you some. You'll, you're going to love it. Who do you have in the NBA Finals this year, and who do you think is going to win? Great question. I'm glad you asked me, PFT. And without a doubt, I think this year's Finals is going to be a battle of these MVP big men. It's going oh. to be the 76ers <laughs> against uh -huh. the Nuggets. Wow. And B, the Jokic centers are back. I have an article on ESPN talking about it. Centers are back, and I'm taking Joel Embiid and the Sixers to win their first title since... 1983 so wow. ending a 40-year drought you can just book it. it it's a solid nba finals prediction right there guys. they should bet no the doubt. they should bet the mvp on that series if yeah. it does come down to to like uh Jokic going up against Embiid. yeah it's like winner yeah, gets no, the MVP. mvp yeah i mean i still don't understand why the mvp is awarded for the regular season i get it it's a regular season award but the the one that really gets me going is there's this new clutch award uh, that they're handing out for regular season. And I'm like, can we at least hand, hang on to that one? Yeah. Until yeah. we see Ray Allen <laughs> yeah. uh, make a shot or Kyrie Irving hit a shot in game seven. Be like, you know who was the most clutch player this season? Yeah, the guy who won the finals with a three point shot. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Let's so, but I, I agree with you. If those guys mate in the finals, hey, it's great for centers. Uh, and, and B, they should just play for the MVP trophy. Great idea. So, Kirk, my last question. It's been a chaotic NBA season. What's your chaotic NBA Finals prediction? Oh, without a doubt, it would be the Cleveland Cavaliers playing. Are you ready for this, guys? Ooh, yeah. The Memphis Grizzlies. Oh! The NBA's dream come true series. Cleveland versus Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually love to see the Cavs versus the Lakers in the finals. How cool oh, would that Oh, that be? would rule. There are some potential great matchups. I mean, obviously, Celtics-Lakers is in yeah. play, and they would be battling for the 19th banner because they're both hanging there at 18, and that would be a cool thing. Uh, to, I think they're it's either 18 or 19. They're both sitting on the same number, 17 or 18. For, forgive me, but that would be cool. Anytime you can get uh, you know, Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, or LeBron James in the final, the leagues and the casual fans are thrilled. Um, and you know, I think the top of the East – you can't go wrong with the top three or four teams in the East getting the finals. I'm now rooting for Kings Cavs. Oh, I'm rooting for Kings Cavs. I'm rooting for the Nets. How awesome would that be if yeah. this year the, the, one, net, the Nets we were great? And, yeah, and we you named every Nets. team in the NBA except for the Nets. I actually think this year's Nets is the best offense in the history. Of the NBA. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, Kirk, what a good thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk to you uh, as the playoffs progress, but we appreciate your time as always, man. Thank you guys for having me on. Enjoy the games. Okay, let's wrap up the show. Uh, again, we have our hockey preview coming on Monday. Uh, if everyone would please tweet Ryan Whitney over the weekend saying, uh, don't bail on PMT, that would help. Just be like, don't don't be a scumbag. Don't bail on PMT. Yeah, that, that ought to do it. Yeah. Maybe make fun of him a little bit. Too. Yeah. So he is, uh, yeah, we're going to do a hockey preview for Monday, which we're very excited about. This is, I know that maybe I, I'm just... Uh, I, I, I love sports. I love all sports, but like, and I know I say this all the time, like this is the best time of year, but th th this starts to like the, when both first rounds are going and you have like seven playoff games every single night for that two week stretch. It fucking rules. Playoff hockey is the best. Hockey, so playoff fun. hockey overtime. It's just different. Yeah. yeah. Especially when it's like every night, because every night there will be two games back to back. One of them is going to go to overtime. 
and you just can't you can't replicate that hold on to your butt. And are feeling. you a little nervous about the Islanders? Because that would be quite unfortunate for memes. Because you know, no, I'm all in on this team. This team is different. They're the greatest hockey team I've ever watched in the regular season. They're the greatest regular season team of all time. They're going to dominate. They're going to run through these playoffs. This sounds like it a, would be a historic choke job if you guys didn't win the Stanley Cup. Sounds like an 18 and one scenario. Uh, where's memes? Is he listening it's right the now? The Islanders or the Panthers, by the way. He's so not. It's a guaranteed Can you text PMT come in? matchup. I, when, when, if it is Islanders Bruins, we'll have to have a, a one minute recap for memes. Uh, after every game, but I just want to I want to see what his thought is if he if he thinks they could actually beat the Bruins. We'll know right away. His face will tell us. It's the playoffs. It's the playoffs. Anything Any could happen. Hot goalie. Don't Hockey. the Islanders have a really good goalie? Yeah, listen, if the Islanders goalie no. stands on his head, no. you're not afraid of him standing on his head, Hank? No, I'd be. Best. We got an all time Twitter notes app from a one seed losing in the first round. Yeah, that's true. That with the Lightning. That's true. What, what, what is it again? Whatever. Memes. Okay. We're talking about the hockey playoffs, and what is it? If the Panthers win tonight, Panthers win. They face the Hurricanes. Okay, and if they lose, then you guys. I think face they can the get Hurricanes. a point. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, they could get a point. So, <coughs> so a if they get one point, you you guys are facing the Bruins. Yes. Do you think you can beat the Bruins? Anything's possible, but the Bruins. Okay, are, that was a yep. no. All right, all right thank good. you, memes. Thank Bruins you, memes. Are very good. All right, well, when 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 that series does happen, we'll have you do a minute recap after uh, every game. Do you, you guys have a good goalie though? Goalie's a stud, right? Goalie's a stud. That's that's all you need. Worst power play in the league. Power play is important. Yeah, the goalie's a stud. But it's, goalie's a, a stud. it's playoffs now. It's different. New season. New season. Playoff hockey's the best. Uh, I really hope the Panthers lose. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So that even tells us even more that yeah. there you got no shot against the Bruins. Damn. No shot. <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, memes. That was. I was hoping he would have a little bit of. He's realistic. Memes is electric. What do you guys? Think? What do you got? Memes are less. She, she's not over. Hopefully, the Panthers lose. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, that's a no shot. <laughs> that was a vote of no confidence right there. And the Islanders beating the Bruins. Memes definitely thinks in memes instead of words. Yeah. If you were to ask him to give him a, give a meme of what he thinks about the first round, it would be it would paint a thousand times more clear of a picture than what he just said. When we asked him, can the can, like the Islanders uh, versus the Bruins thoughts, he was just doing the Michael Scott no. <laughs> Oh, wait, he's oh, got, he's got one another more. one. He's got another one. <laughs> and if the Panthers lose, the Islanders could potentially play the Rangers. Oh, I would love that. That would be that would be that would devastate you, though. What if you lost to the Rangers? Oh, yeah, that would suck. OK, yeah. But if you eliminate them. Yeah. If you beat them, that would rule. Oh, it'd be the best. Yeah. Can you describe your playoff opportunity, your, your chances in a meme? In a meme? What yeah. about Alonzo Mourning shaking his head no and then hmm, maybe Jim Jim Carrey Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, you're saying there's a chance, or the one where Jeff Daniels shits into the toilet in Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, yeah, there there's a chance, but better chance if the Panthers lose. Okay, all right. Okay, so you guys are gonna get steam steamrolled by the Bruins. <laughs> yes, Probably. that's a yes. Okay, okay. all right. Fire fest. <laughs> that was our hockey. That was our pre pre hockey preview. Uh, Sometimes more potent than the actual preview. Yes, uh, Hank, Firefest of the week. I think you guys can guess what it is. What? No. It's that time of year. What? Taxes. Oh, yeah. I thought it was gonna be shorts for sure, dude. You got to get on the no fucking shorts are back. Firefest no. or yeah, it's never a firefest. You got to get Max. yourself on the extension. I've been living on the extension for like six years now. Because if you get on it once, then you just stay on it. Then October fifteenth becomes your new tax day. Yeah. It yeah. also depends on like do, like I'm on the extension for a real reason, but I think you could probably just ask for an extension. Wait, what's your real reason? Swansea, the the they release the whatever it is K ones financial way later, and so they put me on the on the extension. Hank, you probably don't even have to pay taxes though. You probably got a tax guy. Well, I do, and I they've been asking. Is it me Jersey Jerry? No, they've oh, okay. been asking me for documents, and it's kind of like they're like, if I don't send them what they need, then they can't do them. I've sent it to them today, but it's like fuck. Taxes are pretty much optional, anyway. Yeah. I just don't like them. I'm not a fan. No, yeah. they suck. They yeah. sh they should just make it automatic. I guess it kind of is out of your paycheck. Yeah, but that's the thing. Then it's it's still it's not. Yeah. 
You remember when you went like seven years without paying your taxes? Yeah. No. That's false. Well, well no. It, seven you, years without filing your taxes. Yeah, because he was going to get paid money back. There was, was one so year, <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> as a bit. Yeah. You forgot? But or I you, totally did. Was that a forget? If the IRS is listening. Was that a forgetful thing? We have to have some AWLs in the IRS. They have to be listening to this right now. Help yeah. us out. But the thing Let is, us know again, what like we if, can the, do. if they're looking, they're going to check the books, and it's going to be like a plus next to my name. Like, oh, we actually owe him. Th- right. Like, that's what I was making. No money, and I would get like money back on my taxes. So, yeah. But so I did them. That's a joke. You like paid extra money to the government. They yeah. owe you money. Right. They do. Yeah. Let's do something about it. Billy, you know any buildings we could we could approach to talk about this? Oh, Yeah couple there's, there's one there's a couple uh but yeah just fuck taxes forever yeah all right agreed but we pay them on this show same you, well, you know i'm saying this show as a show we pay them right we don't like them but we pay them because we're adults yes max is shaking his head that makes me think he's not paying his taxes I, oh, you're not paying your taxes no i am i just don't like paying them have you ever not paid them no i pay them every time but i <laughs> don't i always whatever <laughs> okay my, good answer it's Billy? A, it's a bad week my, there's a lot of people listening to me like fuck <laughs> my taxes were easy this year which means that they sucked i mean because they like took all the money right i haven't mm-hmm. even thought about filing these taxes yet it's so uh, just, well we have so. good news yeah it's extension till monday at least right yeah so it, i feel like tax has been on a weekend for the last several years you've yeah, been a hot streak all you have to do is just be like hey can i have an extension and then they say yes yeah that's what i'm saying and then you don't I'm have told, to worry about it for six months yeah but then that's football season. Just tougher. That is tougher. Then you have to fu- do go through the process of filing the extension, and then you may as well just do your taxes if you're going True. through that. True. Good point. Good point. Good point. Like, good point. Good point. All right. Well, Hank, good luck to you on your taxes. Hopefully, you pay them this year. Did any of you guys do any loss harvesting? Don't know what that means. What's okay, that a euphemism mind. for? Yeah. Never mind. I did all this shit confuses the I mean, fuck out of me. Max did. Yeah. Max did a lot, a lot of loss. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ha, ha, ha. Your losses. To oh the- man! Uh, Hank had the biggest shit eating grin on his face. <laughs> he didn't one. think that was funny. He was just like, "Nice, yeah. yeah, yeah." You harvest so many losses, Max. You could probably deduct the Super Bowl ticket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I w- yeah, that would be great. <laughs> no, not you. Not you. Not I, you. I, what do you mean? I paid for the Super Bowl ticket. You did. But then we then I paid for futures that didn't hit, and you could have picked UConn. Uh, okay, <laughs> you could have. I know that I could have, but I didn't. And Max Homa also sucks. Hey, I mean, hey, come on. come on! I didn't mean that. I didn't mean come that. I didn't mean on. that. Didn't mean that. I'm gonna cut that part. Come on, no, don't cut that part. Leave it in because we need to, you know. How could you? No, no, I'll keep it in. But I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Used to be such a good boy. <laughs> Come on. All right, Pifty. Firefest of the week is uh, Firefest. Oh, yeah. Firefest is back. Billy McFarland has announced Firefest two, and he's looking for a select group of influencers to invite to Firefest two. So he learned his lesson from doing time uh, with a situation in jail. Yep. And. Uh, he learned a valuable lesson, and he's just going to do Firefest again. That's what he learned is he didn't do it as good the first time, didn't make as big promises as he could have the first time. So he's running it back this summer. So uh, I would like to be invited to yeah. Firefest too. This yeah. summer? I th- when, is it not this summer? I don't know. That seems like it's around the corner. I would just I would like to be invited to Firefest too. Invite us In to fact, Firefest too. I have FOMO that I didn't go to Firefest 1. I don't think we should give that guy publicity. Yeah, you're right. Uh, no, Billy. yeah, well, it's not Good platform for yeah, Billy. Yeah, yeah. Let's, Let's not, not do that. Yeah, yeah. Would hate to have a, a, a liar named Billy on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, I have another fire fest is that I'm fat. Um, no, you're not. So there's that picture that came out, or some you know some screenshots of the video of the Chevy ad that we did over the course of Super Bowl week. You look strong. I look strong. I look powerful. I look like I have a dad bod minus the kids. And um, I just like want to say one of those putty things that you squeeze. And yeah. Just, okay. That's all right, Hank. All right, Hank. We got it. We got the picture. Pretty thick. You freak. Uh, so Hank's a chubby I, chaser now. If you're fat, yeah, that means he's got a tight. Yep, it's true. <laughs> yes, yeah, podcasts should just all get super fat. That'd be <laughs> awesome. But I do have an explanation for it. There's a perfectly good explanation for why I was fat. In okay. Picture. Because video. I told you what. What is it? Hank? It was a video. 
Okay, in the screenshot, say, cut your own mic off and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Rivalry back on. Uh, I was, it, I told this story on the show, but I did the cool sculpting thing because I've got one small layer of fat that was around the very small of my belly underneath my belly button. So they cool sculpted me and uh, they melted away the fat. What they didn't tell me at the time, well, maybe they did, I chose to ignore, is that your stomach swells up big time after you do mm. that so that was like two weeks maybe like a week after i i got the cool sculpting gun done and i just i look fat as fuck in what that about picture. your face did they sculpt your face they didn't sculpt my face my face looked not as it looked normal fat okay it wasn't like over the top fat. i don't think you're fat thank you big cat yeah i appreciate it i do not it. Think so you're fat. let the record show i'm not fat i think you're in strong powerful can lift many things over your I, head i can Probably run a marathon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm not fat. I want the record to show that I'm not fat, despite the fake news that Hank puts out. Do you just like poop out all that fat that gets frozen off? Like, where does it go? You piss it out, so it it goes into your That's lymphatic healthy. system, and then you yeah. have to chug a bunch of water, and then you just you piss it out. Huh? Yeah. Science. Um. I'm all right. Fat. My fire fest is I uh, was challenged to run a mile this week. I did it. People were saying I couldn't do it under 10 minutes. I did it 7.24. I'll say 7.40 because there was some talk that the track might have uh, it might not have been as long as we thought. Either way, it's awoken a beast in me that um I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get back fully into shape and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the thousand pound club, Billy. Oh and I'm gonna get injured. I'm gonna get injured. Yeah, the There's no way I don't get injured, but I want to try. Hex, what is that? You lift a thousand pounds in one session? Yeah. Hex bar or straight? Uh, but yeah, hex bar is healthier. Oh, the the one that's on the sides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'll do that. Yeah, because yeah. hex other, bar, yeah. it's it's deadlift, squat, bench, thousand pounds. You easily could get there. I have a bad back, and I'm 38 years old, and I'm out of shape. Hex you, bar, hex bar. You, you should could, never deadlift over the age of 35. Could you I'm do thousand very, pound club today, Billy? Um, probably not. I actually think I might be able to. What do you squat? Uh, I'm still like I probably could get like. 375 oh then you could yeah because it's really if you can yeah. squat and bench yeah. like it, like combined 550 you should be able to do it i think i was around at my max like 1300 Whew. sick that was back when i was like putting 500 pounds on my back either way i'm gonna challenge myself and i'm gonna get hurt and that's gonna suck it's definitely gonna lead to a back injury. yeah we're, we're just clip this. i hope it doesn't but no no, no. but i'm, I'm warning Listen, you as a friend it's no it's not offense I, I what you're saying is true you're gonna be able to bench correct 250 you're gonna be able to squat 300 mm -hmm. and you're gonna to try to do the deadlift and that's gonna fuck you up so no, i'm gonna try bar. it's probably gonna take like a year no i think we get you there in three I'm months 38 not a shape yeah dude. but like w there's you know a lot of research no i'm not doing i'm doing it all no, natural no, no no are you gonna let billy <laughs> inject you with anything no I'm going to do it. It's either all natural or can't what do it. What about supplements? I no. thought about letting Billy inject me with B12. He was he was giving me the Look, we get the pitch the other day. and L-carnitine, B12, it wasn't creatine, the worst pitch. Um, you know, tons of stuff we can give you that will get okay. you going. It sounds good in the moment when he no, suggests you that can he can inject on, you. you can but put Hank, on the mask. once you reach the point where Billy is sticking a, a hypodermic needle into Insulin your arm needle. and then injecting liquid into it and you don't know what it is, that's a very scary moment. That's a big time, like, I'm wondering how I got here in my life moment. Hey, do you, did you get surgery on your elbow? I did not. Huh. Here's what I'm going to do. If I can't do it, I'm just going to say I can't do it. I'm not going to push myself to the absolute limit. Well, you could dirty bulk, and, like, you may be 400 pounds. I think I'm always dirty bulking. A thousand pounds. I think, I'm, oh, I think I've never not been dirty bulking. Because here's a strategy for you. You could just, you could eat a lot. Yeah. yeah. You could eat a lot of snacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about that? Have Carbo you ever tried doing that? Like you could get up to like maybe donuts. Have you yeah? Have you ever tried snacking a lot? Yeah, maybe Chinese food every Sunday night. Strong men. Cheetos. <laughs> Billy still has Pringles. Some up on I know, I know, I know, I know. But higher Ramen. protein. Yeah. All right, we'll see. And then my other fire fest is um, my son's doing this new thing where he just hits me, and then he's like, uh, "You know, I love you so much." And then so I feel like I'm living with like an abusive boyfriend. <laughs> that's like that's like Hezbollah. <laughs> that's like Hezbollah and his cat. Yeah. No, he literally would like he'll. It's not like he's hitting me hard. He'll like slap me on the leg, and he just be like, "Dada, you know I love you." And I'm like, "Jesus Christ!" He's that, like my pimp. That's guys being dudes. Yeah. He's just walking around like you know. No one makes me feel the way you feel. I have to hurt you. Like, I, I just, you know, I'm crazy about you. Like, that's how I feel every day. Why did you make me do this to <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, so it's a nice little face. Uh, Billy. Uh, first fire fest is that it's currently that time of year where you don't know whether to put the whole AC unit in yet, but it's really hot. 
Mm-hmm. So, but you're too lazy to put it in yet. And it's like, is it really summer yet? Mm-hmm. So you're just like sweating through the night. Yeah, th- yeah, this is. I do love this time of year. We're at, uh, like, I was talking to someone uh, a couple days ago. I don't know how people live. I know that like living in Florida is awesome. Living in LA is awesome. Shut up, Hank. The seasons are awesome. Those first few days of spring yeah. make you feel something that like is so different than if every day was just beautiful. Yeah. And I know people are like, oh, this is just your way of coping with winter. It spring, those first like 50, 60 degree day, days are the best. Sundress season. Yeah. Big time. Uh what what Billy? Seasonal aggression. Yeah, seasonal, seasonal aggression. aggression disorder. Billy gets angrier when it gets no, hot. Not angry, just get there, like hyper. There is something to that because my first summer in New York, I was like you know, I was moving from Austin, so I thought I was uh, like immune to the sun up here because I just come from Texas. So I was like, you know what? I don't need an AC unit in my apartment. I'm just going to ride it out. It can't be that hot. You get so mad when you're hot all yes, day. It's, yes, you, it does make you pissed off at the world. So I would. And suggest- New York heat is different as well. I mean, it's not like Texas heat, but New York heat when it gets really hot and it all just stays on the concrete and it's like. Hot well, at the, like the nine smell. o'clock. Yeah, the, the smell, smell, the hot Human. smell. But the bad. heat at like nine o'clock when it's like the sun's down. Why the fuck is it still so hot? Yeah. Also, with with the ACs getting installed, it's mystery water season. When you're yeah. walking down the street and you just get hit on the face with mystery water from above, that's how. I, that's the beauty of New York, baby. Best city in the world. Yeah, I've actually I, I've on a hot streak of not getting hit with mystery water because I don't go to Starbucks anymore. Go buy Stella Blue Coffee. We're taking down big the big corporations. There's that mystery water under that one. Yeah, it hits you yeah. all the time. Yeah, I get. I used to get just douched. Yeah, um, that's actually a great sales pitch. Do you want to avoid mystery water? Yeah, then buy so still blue coffee. Uh, so Billy, you're are you putting it in or not? Why wouldn't you just put it in? I like. No, I'm now in the fan. I just turned the fan on. So it's on, but it's in. You put it in already. What no. What temperature do you guys sleep in? Well, I just like it cold as hell. When yeah, I sleep. right. I go, I go so why not just put it in? I go like sixty five. Well, because I kind of, I kind of misplaced my. AC unit. Okay, so it, that's, that's a, a different, different fire fest. Different fire that fire. would be the fire fest. I put it somewhere. <laughs> I, put, I put it somewhere, and now I can't find it. Okay, so that is the fire. So fest. you can't. Your fire fest is you can't decide whether or not you want to look for your AC unit. Yeah, well, I was looking for it, but like, you know, oh, so it's been you a busy week. So you were gonna put it in. Yeah. So that's not the fire fest. Well, it is know time to put it in. Cold again. I think it's time to put okay. it in if you can find it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyone who knows where their AC is, put it in. Yeah. I just got the fan going. You know, the fan's gonna be going till like October. Mm-hmm. So you're just giving up on AC this summer? I might. Okay. <laughs> the, you know what this is? This is Billy making a pre-excuse for, yeah. for something, for basically everything. Yeah. For it's being, like I was really, yeah, I was really hot. Just being yeah. sweaty. So yeah. hot. Uh, okay. Oh, other fire fest. I have a black eye from playing basketball. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So what yeah. happened? I heard you got had to get separated with someone. No, guy? that did, that's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. No, I just got an elbow to the face rebounding. But did you get separated? No. Uh, let me just no tell separation. you something, Billy. I will say this: no the, the kid was fucking crying because Billy threw him to the ground like a like a bag of bones, which he was. No, no, th- so and there was him. no foul. I didn't throw. No him. foul, no harm. The kid hooked my arm, mm-hmm. and he hooked it. And he Hook and hold. Me. That's a technical fu- no, wait, wait, free throw. Me, he was giving me this. Yeah, that's a technical free throw. So I threw my arm down, and he got thrown, and then he started bitching about it. And I was just like, if then I started yelling at him, if you didn't hook my arm, you wouldn't be on the floor. And All right, so I'm going to rule this on your side. 100%. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. no I was foul, no say, harm. Yeah. They did, did they blow the whistle? No. no. This Grow other up. guy mm-hmm. who hopefully is listening, there's definitely a point in He's your life. He's also wearing a, a long sleeve white turtle. No, let's not shit on people we play pickup. No, but there's they, definitely a point in your no, life. I think he was he was being aggressive for where, no reason. Where you <laughs> have to realize you're playing, you're playing like intramurals or whatever. Have fun. Don't take it that seriously. Because you don't want to be the adult that gets in an adult fight. At a softball field or a basketball court. No, the other only other thing I'll say, not to not to I guess Billy Billy's worried about his feelings. He was being aggressive, and then at the end of the game, we were down by like five or six. We had the foul. It was like we were down five or six with a minute left. We fouled Stand him. He the like, game. He was like, "Chill out, chill out, chill out." It was like we we were Did just, you guys lose. We lost. Oh, shit. We were down by twenty seven, and we came, we brought it back in within five. That's, well, yeah, they weren't trying as hard because they were up twenty seven. Was a yeah, but effort. we never stopped fighting. No, yeah, that's Billy. I, to tell you the truth, I I don't think I want you on the show anymore. If you ever reach a point where you don't get in, involved in pickup basketball fights, <laughs> I do that's, take pickup. I, I that's go very hard. on brand. I go hard yeah. in the paint. Yeah, you're this fired. Is my second black eye. You're like, fired. Well, I guess it's, it's, it if is you go a little... longer than a year without getting into a fight on some sort of playground. 
you're fucking out. It is different <laughs> because this job, you can just show up with a black eye. I remember vividly being like in arguments in intramurals when I was working in a real job and being like, I don't want to get punched in the face and show up to work with a black eye because that's a whole no, fucking No, I didn't deal. get punched in the face. This is totally unrelated to the to that incident. Oh, so you got punched in the face in a difference? No, I that was actually Nick Mulcahy, awesome dude. We were talking in a timeout and we were getting beat pretty bad. Like we gotta go hard in the paint, like get more offensive rebounds, like yeah. get some more boards. And we both got pumped up, and then we both went for an offensive rebound, and I caught an elbow. Friendly fire. Oh, friendly, friendly fire. fire. But we were like, you know, we were going hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But yeah, uh, I just you know, shout out that guy. He's actually. He was pretty wet. No, 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 no. What I don't are you this, doing? I don't want this guy. I don't want people to be playing us and pick up and be like, oh, shit. Like, I don't want to end up on part of my take. I think that's. They no one knows what, who he is. I know. Whatever. Billy, no, one should be, no one should be judged for their actions when their heart rate's over 150 beats per minute. I agree <laughs> that's, with that. That's what I believe. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, okay. you know, because, you know, we're not, we're all human. That could be, yeah. that could get you into some trouble. <laughs> There's definitely some situations that someone could get their heart rate that fast. I'm pretty sure most times people commit murder. Their heart yeah, rate I was going to say, beats per minute. some very violent crimes that are committed at a heart rate over 150. Yeah. <laughs> I like, also, like, it, anybody, makes, it makes anybody, you sound guilty. Anybody that's on meth, like, if you don't want to get arrested, just do a line of cocaine. <laughs> Officer, uh, officer, officer 50. I, it's not look at my, my Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> I just no know, fuck this dude, Billy. When your, fuck heart, this when your dude. heart rate's high, fuck this dude. I'm, you know, we we made up after the game. It's fine. You kiss? Yeah, we kiss. Okay, Good. nice. Good. All right, uh, Jake, finish us off. Uh, first up, self correction. The Panthers have to win tonight. A point uh, doesn't do. You'll still get here. tweets about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and then I'll be like, "Did you listen to the full podcast?" A lot of people do that. They just. They don't listen to the full podcast. Yeah, we're going to implement I, I, a new system going forward in the in the in the fall where we, we we do corrections at the end and people should save their tweets. We don't want to kill any yeah. golfers' dads on this show. Yeah, right. So we're going to have to have. <laughs> well, that to be live fair, no, no one corrected you on that. So oh no, no one did. It's a, I mean, show, it's a hard thing show. to correct. Oh, oh, oh I, 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 I thought mean. you meant online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, before we stopped recording, it's a hard thing to call out and be like, "No, PFT, he's, he's alive." He's alive. Yeah. Then, and then you get like, then you extend the conversation about a maybe not dead dad. Yep. Yeah, um, and then my fire fest is... He's alive, by the way. He is yes. very much alive. Uh, he's hes the best alive person ever. He is the most alive guy right now mm -hmm. in a, in the world. Yes. Um, my hometown of Fort Lauderdale is underwater. Did you guys hear about this? Oh, yeah, that was bad. Floods, I was stranded cars. Joke. That was bad. It was, it was not great. So yeah. Hopefully... Credit to me for not making soon. a joke before I found out that Jake was being serious about it. Yeah, yeah. I was in plenty of room to sorry. I know work with that one. Yeah. Well, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Hope. Trying to think of a non-offensive here. Um. Well, no. You know what? It is bullshit because everyone has to say like, "Oh, thoughts and prayers." But then all the Florida people make fun of us for dealing with winter. Yeah, I'm. I'm still. That's not say, right. That's not right. They that's live not in right. the floodplain. Yeah, that's not right. Like, they they do that. They do do Florida people are like, oh, how how is shoveling snow this winter? Can I say the same thing when the when the whole town floods? Am I allowed to? I didn't do the research on if anyone got hurt or anything, so I think that's like the first benchmark. Like if everyone's safe, I feel like there's a little bit more of a leash. What about three deaths? No. Okay. One, I asked. That was just a question. Zero or one. Asking. Zero, yep. or one. zero yeah. oh, one. No, like one is no, okay. I meant like zero. You have a little more leeway if there's one or above. No. Got it. What if it, what, what if it's their fault? Yeah. The one. What if someone took a big dump? Or what if it's and a, they were flooding and they yeah. flooded Fort Lauderdale? What if it's uh, Casey Anthony mm. and she drowned? Yeah. What is baby Hitler swimming in a pool? Mm, good point. And more water okay, comes so up. There's some exceptions. Babies okay. can float. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what, but what if the flood comes over the pool? Yeah. Then I'd say I, I hope that this flood killed baby Hitler. Yeah. That, and no one else. And no one else. Mm -hmm. But we do fine. hope people are okay. Yes. That did. That was pretty crazy. I, I saw Jeff Darlington tweeted, uh, our friend Jeff Darlington tweeted a video of like just water just washing through this person's house. That was, uh, yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Um, Unless baby Hitler's there. Yeah. Yeah. If baby Hitler was in that basement, good. Mm -hmm. Happy the happy the water went there. Uh, okay. Hank, have you ever gotten this? What? The lottery ball. No. Are we going to make you those golf balls with lottery balls on them? Taylor made it, didn't respond. Oh, man. How you feeling? I feel like you, you you've given up. Have you given up? No. Never you seem up. really down about never this. surrender. Very down about it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You're very down about this right now, Hank. No, I'm up. If it's up, then it's stuck. All right. Numbers. Six nine. Seventeen. Eighteen. Seventy three. 
Whoa, where'd that come from? I asked Chap GPT. All right. <laughs> oh, no, I'll that go, doesn't count. I'll go with 20. I'm going to go with 24. Mm. What did you guess, Hank? 17? Forty-four. Forty-four. Mike Allstott. Damn. 40. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Low-key, there's a meteorite that crashed in Maine. If you have any leads on it, hit me up. Uh, also... Wait, back, was it... Did it happen or was it... Low-key. It, it crashed. Uh, so, high-key. High-key. A yeah. meteorite crashing. Where was it going? high key. We don't know, but uh, yeah, I might go look for it. Go. Okay, go. I, I think right now, right leave. Now. Go. I, I mean, it's the weekend. I, yeah, yeah, go. I'm going to yeah. start planning. It's Thursday. It <laughs> it's 4.40 on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Oh. oh, also, bacteria may have come from a meteorite, and life on Earth may be from a meteorite. This one doesn't count. I just want to see. People have been asking for a full list, so I think I'm going to tweet out a link of a full list true. of numbers. Oh, perfect. Yeah. They want to run and reply to oh 69. that's too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're already on your weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I work from home on Fridays. <laughs>